This is the KGET special presentation, live from Memorial Stadium on the campus of Bakersfield College. This is BC Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Now let's get ready for kickoff. And welcome live to Bakersfield College tonight, Memorial Stadium. I'm Brian Thomas, Chad Manning, Taylor Schaub will join us in a bit. It is the first Bakersfield College football game in 665 days, according to the PA announcer. And I've got to think there's a bunch of kids down on the field that could not be more excited to get out there tonight. There definitely are. Uh, there's a few, uh, we got a few members of that football team that played their first game over two years ago, and they've been waiting to play another one since. And uh, they're excited, plus the incoming class class of freshmen who are actually sophomores and then another class of freshmen we got a lot of players that this is their first experience in memorial stadium wearing that renegade red and uh, i couldn't be more excited for them I think the same here, Chad, and I'll tell you what, it is a beautiful night for it. It is a beautiful stadium. The, we talked about the new turf that they put in a couple of years ago, but we've got a big new video board. This is a really modern stadium for being a 50-plus-year-old facility all of a sudden. Yeah, it is. You know, the concession stands have been remodeled. The bathrooms have been remodeled. They're putting the major J money to work. They're, they're doing a brand-new field house over here, a new gymnasium. This is going to be a – it's always been a first-class uh, junior college, but it's going to be uh, – second to none here real soon and as for the renegades of course the big change in the off season or the the year and a half off that they've taken is that there is a new head coach in, for this football team for the first time in 15 years talk about our Todd little john a little bit yeah new head coach for the renegades but not new to the renegade john was actually on the staff when i played uh, back in the early 90s uh, great guy really high energy uh, brings a lot of enthusiasm to his team, the way he coaches. Uh, you're going to see a high-intensity, uh, uh, high-speed football team out here. And I think if they mim if they can mimic half of what Coach Little John's energy level that he brings uh, to the to the coaching uh, sidelines on the football field, we're going to be in for a treat. Now, for Bakersfield College, this is really their first game of the season. They're going to take on an El Camino team that has one under their belt. They absolutely drubbed. Santa Monica a week ago, 52-14. to 14. Bakersfield College was supposed to play last week, but they had a cancellation there. They ended up playing a scrimmage instead of an official game, so first real chance to get out there for these players and have it count. Yeah, you know, they got a little bit of that soreness out of the way, that first hit against an opponent. They got a pickup scrimmage against uh, uh, the uh, college up in Kalinga, West Hills, and then they got to play against Pierce. Although it wasn't a game that uh, was a, a full regulation game, they played roughly three quarters, put about 49 points on the board, and kept Pierce from putting any on the board. So the, I talked to the coaching staff. They're excited about what they saw uh, in that live action game, and they're really excited to get uh, a real game under their belt tonight. So in talking to the coaching staff, the game plan tonight, if you're looking at the game that was played last week by El Camino, heavy on the run, they racked up 340 40 rushing yards, bounced it out with a 280-yard passing performance. So a pretty prolific offense for El Camino last week. What's the defensive plan for Bakersfield College to counter that? You know, one of the things that uh, that the Renegades are up against is they got a very limited playbook. They haven't had a lot of practice time. They were shut down for a while because of uh, of the virus, and they 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 missed some practice time. So they've had to dial their playbook back. So they're 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 really good at what they're going to do but they're not going to do a lot of it. So uh, you're going to see a pretty base defense out there, but they're pretty sound uh, with their techniques and their skill set. So I, I think we're going to see... Uh, I don't know that uh, El Camino will be... Uh, too much of a problem for the Renegades. A lot of that rushing that you, that you saw at El Camino was the quarterback scrambling. Uh, they're a passing offense first. They do a lot of screen, a lot of underneath routes. They take real wide splits with their offensive linemen. Um, but for the most part, that quarterback, as long as they can keep him in check, he is a freshman, and keep him from putting those uh, those running rushing yards uh, on, on a scramble, I think we're going to be okay. And so flipping it to the other side of the playbook, what's the offensive game plan for Bakersfield College coming in with a new quarterback? Yeah, we're going to see a lot of 10 and 11 uh, receivers, or 10 and 11 personnel, so that means uh, one tight end and three receivers or four wide receivers, and that's really the strength of the Renegade offense. That wide receiving core uh, is where they get, have a lot of speed and a lot of talent, and they've got a freshman quarterback in Garrett Castro this year um, who the coaches are really impressed with. Um, he, he's going to take uh, the, the, the snap from the, from the center and look to put the ball in the air quite a bit. 
So expect a pass-heavy offense for, it sounds like, both of these teams. So if, if things get into a shootout situation here, that could be what we're looking at. It's a very high-scoring ball game tonight, assuming. Now, you're saying, though, that that Renegade defense is stout and should hold. Yeah, the Renegade defense, I think, is uh, going to, they have got a really experienced uh, core in the center of that defense with their line, three linebackers. All three of those guys have uh, game experience as Renegades. Uh, they're coming back. Uh, they've got a really stout defensive line, some big, heavy guys up front that can put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And they're real young on the edges, so the ends are going to rush. Uh, the, those uh, young uh, uh, defensive ends, um, <clears throat> they think they can put their athletic, they can put some pressure on that quarterback. And the question mark might be the secondary. Uh, we don't have a, a lot of experience back there. They're excited with the athletes that they have, but nobody's really uh, carved out their role yet. So we'll see what we, we could be in for a treat. Well, as you can hear behind us, the game now just a few minutes away. We're going to uh, we're going to quiet down for the national anthem because the other big thing that's happening today, obviously, the day is September 11th, 2021, which marks 20 years since the terrorist attacks on this country in 2001. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years, but the Bakersfield College program is doing a uh, a great thing for, with the local first responders tonight. Those folks are getting in free to the game tonight. They're going to do a little tribute before the game for that, and then we'll uh, obviously the national anthem will take on just maybe that much more of an importance tonight just considering the date and the history here sure it's been a very emotional day uh, all, all across our, our city and our country and uh what better way to cap it off than a nice tribute for those people tonight? Well, and then, you know, cap it off with maybe the most American thing there is, is a good football game, right? And, and, and you know, they, they say, you know, baseball may be America's pastime, but football is America's lifeblood, man. When it comes to sport, I think we all agree with that. Uh, it's the reason that, uh, that college football, the NFL, is as popular as it is here. It's, uh, you know, truly as American as apple pie. So we're just a couple of minutes away from kickoff tonight. Now, weather conditions, why? It's warm. It's not... It's not overbearingly hot as it was, you know, when we did this game a couple of years ago. And then remember, you know, two years ago, 2019, we had that freak little thunderstorm open up somewhere in the second quarter, blew some of our production equipment away. And, you know, we were kind of holding on for our lives a little bit there for a second. So it got a little weird on us. But it, tonight, so far, a breeze, certainly. A little warm, but very nice conditions. Obviously going to be a few degrees warmer down on that field. Yeah, it, not not any kind of temperatures. I think that'll cause lots of problems. Uh, it, it's it's a lot cooler than what both teams are used to practicing in uh, of late. And I think the Renegades are, are going to be uh, the weather's not going to be a factor. The wind could, if it picks up and stays like this, it could cause a little havoc on a few, on a few throws here and there. But um, I think for us watching the football game here live and hopefully uh, a lot of people have come out tonight and, and get to experience this first uh, live game in the in Renegade Stadium but uh, weather's perfect. Yeah the tailgating is live out there in front of us you were out there with Taylor earlier in the parking lot the the tailgate atmosphere here at Bakersfield College has always been a lot of fun and that is back out in force certainly as the Renegades and the uh, El Camino Warriors have both taken the field behind us we're uh, within our last 90 seconds or so before kick. Yet in the midst of the chaos of September 11th, 2001, we also bore witness to true heroism and selfless sacrifice this evening. Bakersfield College recognizes and remembers those who lost their lives and all those who went into harm's way to protect their fellow Americans. We ask that you please stand and join us in a moment of silence followed by the singing of the national anthem by the BC Chorus dedicated to the heroes of 9-11.
anticipating the BC chorus soon, but thank you for that moment of silence, waiting for the national anthem. National Anthem has been sung here at Bakersfield College tonight on this 20th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. The Bakersfield College Renegades, the El Camino College Warriors now. The last thing left to do, the cannon's been fired. Chad, the last thing left to do is kick the football. Yep. God bless America. Can't, can't ask for anything better than that. We're so excited to see the Renegades take the field. You could just, it's palpable. You can feel it, Brian, and I'm, 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 I'm excited to be here and be a part of this with you. There, there is something about opening day. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. It doesn't matter whether you're on the field, in the stands, or are, in our case, up here in the broadcast position. There is something exciting about opening day in any sport, and that includes junior college football here tonight at Memorial Stadium. The uh, Renegades are going to receive the opening kickoff. They are set deep with, uh, looks like, Dylan Tooker back there at his own five-yard line, along with Zach Hawkins, it appears, on the near hash mark. Keep the receive. Yeah, Dylan's uh, one of our strong safeties, and uh, Zach's going to take the lead role at the running back position this season. So uh, both of those guys got breakaway speed, and both of them have returned uh, kicks for touchdowns uh, last week against Pierce. Everano Guzman lining up to kick it for El Camino. It is a low line drive kick to start the season, taken by Hawkins at his own three up the near sideline. He's going to cut it back at the 25, inside the 30. Little spin move across the 30-yard line before he's finally brought to the ground at about the 35. Good position there for the Renegades after a nice return by Hawkins. That's 11 guys on special team that did their job. Off the field they go, and now the offense is starting field position uh, for your first your home game. It's led out there, as we mentioned in the pregame show, by quarterback Garrett Castro. The Green Valley. Castro will start off in the shotgun. It's going to be Hawkins in the backfield with him. Three receivers and a tight end. Throw out the far flat at the 35-yard line. Catch is made by Jack. The first down to the yard line. Yeah, nice quick passing game out in the flats to Jackson. Jackson's a product. He's a freshman out of uh, Shafter High School. Uh, good to get that first catch under his belt. Nice, nice game for the Renegades right off the get go. A little quick out, a nice timing route, and it picks up a first down and a little more. They're going to go first and 10, no huddle. It'll be Garrett back to drop again. Sets up a screen left side, and a catch is made. Not much there. In fact, may have lost a yard on the pass play as Castro came underneath on a quick screen. Yeah, good play by the defense there. Uh, the rush end uh, felt that uh, lack of pressure from the offensive lineman, and he dropped back in the passing zone, and they were able to, to uh, keep that, uh, pa that gain to, uh, or actually stop him for a little bit of a loss. There. Yeah, about a one-yard loss. That's Xavier Marshall with the catch. 
Brings up a second down and 11 for the Renegades. Marching away from the sun into that eastern end zone. Clapping for the snap is Castro, drops a throw. He's going to tuck it and is going to be brought down from behind. A nice sack by Lando Brown out of Gardena, California. The freshman linebacker gets in there on Castro for yeah, have, a five-yard loss. Yeah, we had a little miscommunication up there on the offensive front. And you're going to get that early in the season. With a lot of... Uh, got to work together as a unit and sometimes you, you miss some of those stunts and the defense got through there and made a nice play on the quarterback third and long now for the renegades castro looking over to the sideline for some extra help from the coaching staff he's got four receivers in the pattern from the gun drops to throw under pressure and he's going to be brought down for a second consecutive play as once again in there for the tackle is Lando Brown. That's his second sack on as many plays. And the Renegades, after a promising first down play, they're going to go three and out after that. Yeah, the, so the first uh, pass that we saw there was a quick pass. You know, they had a nice uh, nice play with uh, Jackson Sanchez. But both of those were three or four step drops and, and took a little bit longer to develop the routes downfield. And the offensive line didn't hold the pressure off the quarterback. So uh, they're going to have to get a few things straightened out there over on the sideline with Coach. Uh, but I think they'll get it done. Dwayne Hartman from Stockdale High School puts a end over end kick. That's taken at the uh, about the 30 yard line by Robbie Kalinez out of Warren High School in Downey in Southern California. Gets out to about the 34-yard line, and that's where the Bakersfield College defense will get their first chance to shine against El Camino. So we'll see what the defense has got. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of positive energy out there. You see those guys rush out onto the field, ready, looking to the sideline for the play call from the coach. They're fired up and they're ready to go. Let's see if they can put some pressure on that quarterback. Makai Jordan is their quarterback. He was the, uh, they used four quarterbacks in their victory last week. He was the main one, threw 18 passes, completed 12 of them. Play action, nope, it's going to be a give. Right up the middle and not much there. The Bakersfield College defense all converging for about a two yard gain for Bra Brandon Jordan. Five foot nine, 185 pound sophomore running back. Looks like they're going to go for with an up-tempo offense. They already got the play from the sideline. Starting the... Jordan still in that backfield. He'll get the give again. Cuts it back. Falls down. Slips trying to cut it back there. Looked like a little sweep play to the outside. There was nothing there. He tried to cut it back and just lost his footing and went down. So Yeah, he was he was avoiding pressure. Uh, Cameron Williams there, the, the line, outside linebacker for the Renegades, filled the, filled the cutback hole there and, uh, and forced him to go down on that slip. So that's a great play there by Cameron. One of our sophomore uh, uh, middle linebackers there. Once again, no huddle. Third and ten here. As Jordan drops back to throw, he's under pressure. He's going to step up and get out. Field heaves it down the sideline. Wide open man there, but overthrows him by just a step. Incomplete. That was intended downfield for Dion Moore. Yeah, nice play there by Isaiah Jernigan. Uh, he's the uh, quarterback there for the Renegades. He he closed on that ball. He had two wide open receivers down there. And fortunately, the ball, the both receivers converged on the ball, and Isaiah was there to uh, to knock it down. So great job by Jernigan. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. You're right. They two two receivers wide open and sort of threw it in the middle of the two of them, and neither of them could get there. So that'll bring up a punt. Yeah, three and out for the defense. Couldn't ask for a, a better start for the Renegades for their defense. And he drops the snap. Now whistles are blown. So it looked like uh, that snap might have gone a little early there. May have been some motion on that line Run for... Fall start. Offense. And that's what it was. So they'll mark him back five yards, and we'll try that punt situation again for El Camino. Now fourth and 15. Deep to receive for the Renegades. Looks like number 33. That's Ashton Thomas out of Hart High School in Santa Clarita. He's going to, I thought he called for the fair catch. He did not. He fields the ball, turns it around the right corner at the 40. He's got the sideline across midfield before he's finally thrown out of bounds into El Camino territory. So I thought he had a fair catch there for a moment, but he had a guy right in his face. Yeah, I, I think the defense did too, and I know the opposing coaching staff <laughs> thought that he made a fair catch, but maybe he was just trying to keep the sun or wind out of his eyes but made a, made a nice uh, catch on the football there with somebody right in his face. 
and had the wherewithal to turn it up the sideline for a nice game. We got an official's timeout here. We're just underway. 11.06 still left in the first quarter of the home opener for the 2021 season for the Bakersfield College Renegades here on KGET tonight. Renegades starting off with a uh, uh, nice quick play on first down. Looked to be on the move and then three and out after that. A couple of sacks. So we'll see if they go back to either a running game or that short quick passing game Chad was talking about. Once again, it'll be Garrett Castro in the shotgun. Three receivers to his left. Clapping for the snap and takes it. He is under pressure again. Off balance throw, but a catch is made down the sideline by the tight end. Inside the 15 yard line before he's brought down. Rumbling inside the 15 is Carson McKinley. The wide receiver, the freshman out of Centennial High School, the former Golden Hawk. Actually, I believe that was 86. That's our that's our tight end, Kendall Martin. He got loose on the sideline there and, and made a nice uh, nice play on the ball. A little tough to see those numbers out here. Well, we got two 86s on my roster, so that's my bad. Kendall that, Martin. Yeah, that would be the reason why. Is the other one. Let's go with Kendall Martin, the uh, tight end out of Liberty. Yeah, Kendall's our Kendall's our starting uh, starting uh, tight end. Uh, Sophomore had a little experience with us uh, two years ago. Happy to see him back here. He's gained a little bit of a size to him. He's a big, uh, big blocking tight end, which uh, but can also get loose and make nice plays down the field. Nice play on the ball there. Renegades with a quick first down play. Not much there. Brings up second down now and about nine to go inside the 15 yard line. They're going to give again. That's Hawkins. A little room inside the 10 and down to about the eight yard line. You know, that defensive front's giving our offensive linemen, uh, giving our offensive line a little, uh, a little, little fits here early on. They're doing some stunting and some stimming, and they got to get that sorted out so they can make sure that they get a, the right assignments, the right hats on the right bodies, and uh, and get these guys picked up. Because right now that pressure from El Camino is uh, getting both to the quarterback and stunting our running game. Third down and five here, deep in Warrior territory. They can pick up a first down without scoring at about the two-yard line. Cole will throw on third down, has time, goes into the middle of the end zone, incomplete, but out comes the dirty laundry. The yellow flag thrown by the receipt by the uh, back judge back there in the back of the end zone. Looks like maybe a pass interference on its way. Yeah, Lauren Johnson made a nice play on the ball, but uh, couldn't get to it because the uh, quarterback uh, had a hold of his uh, backside and pulled him down. So that's a pass interference, I believe. We'll wait for the man in the white hat here. It is. Number nine is defense. That foul result is an end zone. We'll all be placed at the two-yard line, first down. So the Renegades get that first down we mentioned earlier. This time they'll do it via the penalty. The pass interference sets them up first and goal from the two-yard line. And goal at the two. Hawkins in the backfield. It's going to be a give to him. He's going to dance his way into the end zone for a renegade touchdown. All right, go Gates. <laughs> Great play there. A nice cutback from the running back. Good vision. Started play side, saw that it wasn't there. And a nice cutback lane was sealed off by the left guard and left tackle, Caden Cox and Robert Trujillo. They had a, a, a nice backside sealed off there. He was able to make a cut and get in there for a touchdown. Great job by the Renegade offensive line. A good vision by Zach Hawkins for his first touchdown uh, as a Renegade here. Peter Dellis on for the extra point. The all-time points leader in Garces High School history. Puts it up and puts it through. You hear that, Brian? Brian, you hear that cannon? That's another sight and sound of B Bakersfield College that we've missed for the last two years. Love to hear that cannon go off at, at Memorial Stadium. It echoes. You can see the smoke. You just get your blood boiling, and you're really excited to be out here experiencing Memorial Stadium and Renegade football and to go ahead 7-0 early in the first quarter. Oh, just like, we, just like they wrote it up. So it is seven nothing Renegades. That uh, long drive was set up by a 42-yard catch and run by Kendall Martin, the tight end, and then a plunge by Zach Hawkins into the end zone from two yards away after a pass interference penalty. And the Renegades are out in front early. 9:28 to go, first quarter. Seven nothing Bakersfield College. You know, and the special teams did a great job giving awesome field position to the offense. Defense stuffed them three and out. Had a nice punt return. We're able to get the ball in the 50-yard line with a short field, and then the offense did what they had to do, which was punch it into the end zone so a good start to uh, to the game for the renegades and i'm sure that coaching staff over there and uh, you fans at home are excited too so peter dellis will be kicking off and with that peter dellis who was successful on that extra point a moment ago tees it up for bakersfield college at the 35 and will send it down to that far end of the field where 
Aaron McGee awaits it on the one side. It'll go to the other. A fair catch now called for. It sort of bounces off the hands of one of the up men, but they'll blow it dead after the ball pops out. The ball was blown dead prior to that coming out, though. Yeah, we had a different receiver other than the one that actually received the ball, giving the fair catch signal. So as soon as the ball was caught, dead ball. Right. Defense now takes the field, and El Camino's uh, going to have to start deep in their own territory. So the result of all of that running around and juggling of the football was pretty much the same as if Dallas had booted it out of the back of the end zone. It's going to come out to the 20, about the 25-yard lines where they'll start out, and we'll see the second drive of the night from El Camino. Little huddle of their players had theirs. They'll talk something over there. The uh, line judge from the far sideline came running in, blowing his whistle. Let's see what the referee has. We're on the fair catch signal. 20 yard series on 20 yard line first down. So with that, they'll move the ball back five yards. I thought they got a fairly generous spot there, but uh, it does go, in fact, back to the 20. Hey, uh, Brian, I. I know it's renegade football, but I'm a Bakersfield guy, so I don't want to interrupt, but I think I will. Breaking news out of Milwaukee, Corbin Burns just, just delivered a no-hitter for the Milwaukee Brewers against the, uh, against the Cleveland Indians. So Bakersfield boy with uh, Bakersfield college ties, uh, pitching in the big leagues and doing it like no other, shutting them down. Congratulations to Corbin Burns, our Bakersfield boy. He combined with Josh Hader to shut down the Indians for uh, the ninth no-hitter of the season. So. Kudos to Corbin and, sorry, back no, to Renegade no. football. Very, very cool. That's awesome. I'm glad, uh, glad we got that in there. It's going to be a second down play here. A little toss out to the left side, trying to get the corner. Got out to about the 25-yard line did Stephen Bradford, Jr. He, of course, racked up 140 yards on 14 carries a week ago. That's his second of the night. Gets five. Lawson with the tackle there on the near sideline. Brings up a third and four for El Camino as Makai Jordan, their quarterback, looking over to the coaching staff on the sideline for a signal. Got a, uh, a tight end in an almost wing formation off on the right side there. They're going to fake give, and now the quarterback's going to keep it himself. The Renegades not fooled. They are right there to bring down Makai Jordan. Yeah, great job by the defensive line there, getting pressure. The ends uh, kept the contain of the pocket. The quarterback had nowhere to go. Part of the reason you get that tight end spread so far out is the splits from the offensive linemen. You'll catch it on the next series, but they're three feet from guard to, to tackle and three feet from the, to guard to center. They've got huge splits. It's part of their program. It's part of the way they run their offense. But what it does is if you can beat your guy one-on-one, -on -one, it gives you a straight shot into the quarterback and into the backfield, and that's what the Renegades did there. So it brings up a fourth down now as they will punt. Punt is away, although it was close. High end over end kick. That'll take a bounce into the arms of the waiting Ashton Thomas, who has the corner on the left side and is pushed out of bounds at his own 45-yard line. Ashton Thomas, the sophomore, as we mentioned earlier, out of Hart High School in, Cl in Santa Clarita. And the Renegades now will get to follow up their scoring drive. We'll see what they can do once again with very good field position near midfield. Yeah, I don't know if it translates onto the television screen, but the, the intensity that this team is playing with, it, very high-paced, very fast, very the speed level and the energy level, you can feel it from the Renegade football team on all th in all three teams, offense, defense, and special teams. And so far, so good. Here is Castro once again out of the shotgun. Quick throw, wide receiver screen is set up. That's Jernigan. He's got the catch. Reverses all the way across the field up the middle at the 50. He's got the sideline at the 40 before he scampers out of bounds at the 35-yard line. You talk about turning nothing. We've been either an incomplete or a two-yard loss into a huge gain for Isaac Jernigan. And we had two guys on that football field other than the ball carrier that did, did something extraordinary. One of them was the quarterback, Garrett Castro, delivered a great comeback block to to on as on the cutback and then we had wide receiver on this end of the field didn't catch who it was but had, had his defender locked up and and making blocks 
10 seconds after the, the catch was made for a nice, uh, the sprung for a nice yards after catch. They're going to fake again. They're going to go with almost that same play out far sideline. They've got a receiver there. That's Marshall scampering around the corner for another renegade first down or very close to it as he's pushed out of bounds right at that first down marker is Xavier Marshall. Yeah, you're seeing some of the talent that the coaching staff was excited about at the wide receiver position. Uh, you saw Jackson Sanchez, and, and that's Xavier Marshall making a nice play there. But watch the receivers. You can't make those plays with those screens without good blocking. Comes out here to the near side now, and that is once again Sanchez. Uh, he will be pushed out of bounds. Enough for that yard that they needed for the Renegade first down. So a new set of downs for Bakersfield College. Both of these teams, Chad, not bothering to huddle up. They're keeping that intensity going. They're going right to the line of scrimmage every play. Yeah, the coach said they're going to work fast, and they're going to work fast, and we're going to work fast, and uh, they're going to, and that, that's what we're seeing here. There's a little give up the middle, not a whole lot there. Actually, after that little spin move, got a few more yards there. There is a flag on the play, so we'll wait to see what that is. Pickup of about five on that play. We'll see if it stands. Well, either the, we did something wrong or they did something wrong. That is excellent insight from Chad Manning, ladies and gentlemen. That is, uh, that's what makes him the best in the business. Yeah, that's what they don't pay me for. <laughs> <laughs> or that's why they don't pay me. I guess that's what During the play, neutral zone infraction, number 90 of the defense, five-yard penalty remains first down. Chad hedged his bets, giving himself a 100% chance there, and you paid off. They that's did right. something wrong. The good guys did something right, and the bad guys did something wrong. We'll take it. So now we got first and five uh, down on the 15-yard line. Let's see what the offense can do here. So that was an encroachment penalty for those keeping score at home. First and five here. Two receivers to the right of the formation. Hawkins in the backfield. He'll get the give. Dances off the left side. Up the middle, falling forward near the 10-yard line for a pickup of about four for Zach Hawkins. Yeah, we're not getting any hats on the linebackers from the offensive line, so we're doing a good job good, doing a good job with the defensive linemen, but we're not getting anybody to the second level, and those linebackers are filling the hole pretty quickly. So in order for us to spring a run and get, some, get our running back into the end zone, we're going to have to get a hat on those linebackers, and we're not quite there yet. 5-14 to go, first quarter. 7-0 Renegades. They're threatening again down in the shadows of the eastern side of the eastern end zone. It'll be Cole dropping back to throw, or Castro rather, dropping back to throw. Throws it up. It was tipped in the air and intercepted. That ball got tipped, popped way up in the air, and they're playing center field was an El Camino Warrior. Yeah, unfortunate there. Uh, had a tip ball. Those things happen, especially down on the goal line when you're when you're confined to a short area. But uh, unfortunately, Garrett didn't see uh, his tight end wide open in the left corner of the end zone. But Kendall Martin, Martin made a nice move on the safety there and was, uh, was open. But uh, uh, Castro didn't have quite enough time to be able to see him. So he went for his, uh, a different read there and, and unfortunately got tipped at the line of scrimmage and uh, got, a, got a turnover. So uh, not worst things can happen. We don't like to see it, but uh, see if the defense can't uh, get another three and out and get the ball back to the offense. Ball was intercepted by Kakoa Carroll playing in his hometown. He's from Torrance. That's where El Camino College is located down in the South Bay area of Los Angeles. They've got an injury on the field, a warrior down down there, so they are uh, tending to him. But in the meantime, as they, uh, medical teams get to work down there. We can talk a little bit about Garrett Cat, and of course this is, you You got baseball in my mind. I called him Garrett Cole there, I think, in that uh, previous, that previous drive. Garrett Castro, but that uh, was his first incomplete pass, that interception, his first incomplete pass of the night. You've talked about that, that quick, that quick passing game, and we've seen a lot of that. Those little wide receiver screens, those three-step drop timing routes. That's been pretty effective so far for the Renegades. Yeah, and I think he's got a nice quick release, and I think that's why he won the starting position. Um, he is a freshman. He won it over a, a, a returning sophomore. There actually was a huge quarterback competition. They had 12 guys out for the quarterback position this year. A lot of that is you got three years worth of players coming out for a team, but to to win a spot uh, out of 12 guys, you know you get, you got some talent, and I think you're seeing it on the field right now. The good news, if there is a silver lining to that interception, it being so deep in El Camino territory, they've got their backs now up against their own end zone uh, with the ball spotted at about the seven-yard line. 
You can see now the offensive line, the way they're lined up. Chad talking about it earlier. The spacing between those offensive line is uh, almost jarring to look at. Jordan takes the snap. It's going to be a give to the running back. He's going to reverse field out of a tackle. Has the corner at the 10. Now he's got the sideline. Down to the 30, out to the 40 before he's finally jammed out of bounds. And a what may be a touchdown saving jam out of bounds by Jalen Lawson, the safety, in pursuit. Yeah, I got a little help there from the, uh, from the wide receiver holding the cornerback. But unfortunately, uh, uh, it, it went missed by the... Uh, the, the uh, Zebras out there, so uh, here we are. Uh, good, good, good first down gain by the uh, El Camino team. 31 on the play. They're going to go right back. Nope, play action. Now they're going to throw. They've got a receiver on a crossing route, just short of the first down as he's brought down as Robbie Colenzo. Yeah, this uh, El Camino team is a is a rhythm team, and you don't want this offense getting in a rhythm because if they can get in a rhythm, they do a lot of crossing routes and a lot of uh, screen plays, and they can really get you back on your heels and off of balance. So you, you, we got to do some things as a defense to get them out of that rhythm. Once again, going no huddle. It's a give to Bradford. They picked up a first down on that previous play. Not much there on the first down, though. The Renegades sniffing out that running play pretty quickly. Yeah, got a got some big bodies in there on the defensive line. Some big, heavy, strong guys that can put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and uh, plug up the middle, and, and uh, they're doing a great job of it so far. Second down now and eight for El Camino. Moving right to left from our vantage point here on the southern sidelines of Memorial Stadium. You can see the shadows just starting to stretch over the field down on that far side. As Jordan drops to throw, has time and a receiver in and out of the hands. He bobbled it, but managed to hang on. No, they're saying incomplete on the far sideline. So bobbled and dropped by the intended receiver, Bryant Williams. So the biggest play so far of this drive is this play right here. Third and long uh, with a freshman quarterback. I would expect the coaches to put some pressure on this guy, see what he's got. They know he's going to throw, so they're probably going to pin their ears back, bring some pressure, and see if they can't uh, disrupt him here. Receivers in motion there brings a bunch formation to the near side. They do this on almost every play as well. They get set, and then everybody kind of jumps up and looks at the coaching staff over there for something. And then they go back to getting set and actually run the play. So third and eight here at midfield. It's going to be Jordan. He's got time. Now feels the pressure under pressure. Brings it down. Takes it himself out into Renegade territory to the 45-yard line. Penalty flag comes flying in toward the end of the play. Yeah, we had a legal block in the back, I believe, against the Renegade. So that uh, should be a 15-yard penalty. I don't know if he did. If he got the first down, they'll probably take the penalty. And if not, they looks like they're declining. The yeah, it looks like he did pick up the first down on that uh, run. We'll see what they do. Blindside block, number 34 the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Remains third down. Went the other way, so on uh, El Camino in that case. Right. So they'll take uh, the 15 yards the other direction. That'll bring up a third and long. Sorry, I, I meant that the foul was on the Renegades, against the Renegades. They, they got waylaid in the back. Um, a receiver cut crack back block and really took out the linebacker there. So, yeah, fortunate for us. Now they got a third and 20 and see what we, here comes the pressure. And once again, a quick look over to the sideline to the coaching staff. Bring in some hand signals. Single setback and now a flag comes flying in from the back judge. I believe that's a delay of game. It's going to cost him another five yards. Yeah, we'll take it. That's one of the disadvantages of running an offense like the, the El Camino's running. What they're doing when they're looking to the sideline is they're looking, the coach is reading the defense and making an adjustment, and he's calling a play based off of the defensive scheme that he sees. So you'll a lot of times you'll see a running back motion so they can see what kind of coverage the defense is in, and then the coach will, will make a, the change to the offensive play. Clock running, 2.42 to go first quarter. Jordan back to throw, heaves it down the near, right down the middle of the field, incomplete. The uh, El Camino sideline strongly looking for a penalty marker there. They did not get it, and it'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, the back judge made the right decision there. He, he thought about it. I saw him reach for his flag, and then he did the little replay in his brain and goes, no, nope, there wasn't any pass interference there, so he kept the flag in his pocket. Back judge made the, night, the right call there. Uh, great job by the Renegade defense of, of getting out of that situation, and now if we can get any kind of return on the football here, the offense should start again with great field position. Ashton Thomas once again back deep for the Renegades at his own 30-yard line. 
7-0. Bakersfield College leading and about to get the ball back. High spiral kick to the right side. Takes a El Camino bounce into the arms of Thomas, who's got the sideline again up to the 45-yard line before he's tapped out of bounds. And, boy, Ashton Thomas twice now on his three punt returns he's had to play that sort of that play the carom play the bounce and he's done it very very well yeah you're dancing with the devil when you do that 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 ball you know it's not a round ball it yeah. can bounce in any direction and fortunately for him it's bounced right into his hands but very easily that ball can bounce can carry him off of your foot and then you got a problem you got a uh, you got a loose ball and, and it leads to a potential turnover so we always like to see him field those cleanly but unfortunately, that's kind of the style you get with these uh, Australian kickers. They, they <laughs> kick the ball at a sideways angle. There's Hawkins down the left side, out for a couple of, oh, call it two-yard gain on first down for Zach Hawkins. Seems to be the hot thing. You know, I'm, I'm watching football uh, today, and just about every other team on the, on the television had a, had a kicker or a punter from Australia. Uh, what is this with punters from Australia? You know, the Renegades punters. They, they actually have uh, a punter that punted for him two years ago. He's still on the team from Australia, but uh, he's not the punter this year. There's Castro to throw. He's going to be dragged down from behind. Almost lost his grip on that football, but managed to tuck it back in as he went down. Loss of two on the play. It'll bring up a third and ten for the Renegades. I don't know about you, Chad, but I, you know, one of my favorite things, I can remember when I was a kid, you know, midnight when ESPN was still in its infancy and they would play Australian rules football like two in the morning. Man, I used to love watching that sport because you talk about just something that's fun. I had no idea what was going on most of the time, but man, it was fun to watch. Yeah, run, run with the ball and kick it. Yep. Run with the ball yeah. and kick it. It was absolute the, chaos. What we always to wanted to do when we were playing football yep. is when the, somebody came to tackle, you just kick it away. Yep. Third down and long here as Castro drops to throw. He's under pressure again and will be sacked for the fourth time already tonight is Castro. Yeah, have a little trouble there at the right guard position. Um, th th that's the second guy to, to take that uh, spot tonight, and, and we're struggling. So uh, we've got a good, uh, good, strong defensive lineman there, and we're not able to keep – when we're man-blocking him one-on-one, we're not able to keep him off the quarterback. So we're going to have to uh, make a change to our protection there if we want to have any shot of throwing the football down the field. That'll bring Dwayne Hartman, the freshman out of Stockdale High School, out to punt. Looks like Sanchez deep to receive for El Camino. Max Protect there. They get the punt off. Fair catch is called for and made by Sanchez at the 22-yard line. Not the best of series there for the Renegades. They, they didn't get, weren't able to get into a rhythm. Um, they had a, had a nice first down play, but then we got caught uh, two times in the backfield trying to throw the football, and uh, that's... Uh, that's not going to march you down the field. So we're going to. I see the offensive line coach uh, Rich Castro's over there uh, giving him the business. <clears throat> he's uh, got the clipboard out, and he's going to. Uh, he'll make some adjustments. He get. He's a good coach. He'll get those guys fired up and and make the changes that we need. To, it, uh, it's a solid offensive line. They just need some time working together in order to get it right. So first and ten here for El Camino. They're going to do a little toss back. That's Bradford. He's got the left side. Got a good. The thirty. And down to about the 35-yard line before he's brought to the ground by Dylan Tooker, the strong safety out of Liberty. Yeah, Dylan's uh, one of our returning players, a uh, great, uh, great player uh, in the short uh, in the season 2019. But uh, he comes, out of, like you said, out of Liberty High School and does a great job there at the strong safety position. It'll be Bradford again trying this near side. Nowhere to go this time, though, as Cameron Williams, the sophomore linebacker, is standing there waiting for him. That cannon, by the way, signals the end of the first quarter. So one of the four quarters for tonight is in the books, and the Bakersfield College Renegades are leading the El Camino Warriors 7 to nothing. as we will switch sides and start the second quarter here in just a moment. Stephen Bradford finally getting going. Remember, we talked about him having 140 yards last week on uh, 14 carries against Santa Monica College and we will uh, take a break here at the end of the first quarter we'll be right back with the start of the second Bakersfield College Renegade football on KGET looks like someone got a new truck I bought it online. It was so easy. 
Wow, online? I wasted an entire Saturday of truck talk at a local dealer when we bought our new truck. They should have bought it at Burke. We make online car buying easy and confident. From selection to financing and delivery to your home. And committed to take care of you 100% of the time, online or in person. Jim Burke Ford. We aim to give our customers a reason to say, I bought it at Burke. Howdy, Todd. Uh, what is going on? Our new barbecue brisket fries. Crisp fries topped with tender smoked brisket, cheese sauce, grilled onions, and savory barbecue sauce. Mmm. Brisket. Whoa. Is this my voice? Is this forever? Technically, it's only for a limited time. Mmm, those look... Mighty tasty. Uh-oh. Try a taste of the Old West with barbecue brisket fries at Wiener Schnitzel. Think premium can't be capable? Think again. Introducing the first ever AT4 lineup. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. Current eligible GMC owners get over 2700 for disallowance on 2021 GMC Sierra light duty crew cab models when you finance through GM Financial. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. More than 30 yards to go. First play of the second quarter is a little, little trap run over to the left side on a second down and very, very long inside uh, their own 20-yard line, inside their own 15, actually, El Camino now to start the second quarter. We've switched directions. They're going to be going from our left to our right into the darkness of that eastern end zone. 7-0 Renegades just underway second quarter. Brian Thomas along with Chad Manning. We'll talk to Taylor Schaub at halftime here on KGET. A long little screen pass in and out of the hands of the running back on a crossing route. Incomplete. I heard the footsteps from here. I know that he could hear the footsteps <laughs> down there. He wanted nothing, to, <laughs> no part of catching that football. He was I don't blame him. Absolutely clocked from behind. You're right. So it brings up a uh, fourth down now and they will punt Yet again, so Chad, you, you're starting to look like Nostradamus in that pregame show talking about that Bakersfield College defense. So far, everything they've been advertised to be. You know, I did my homework, and uh, apparently the coaching staff did too. Book and uh, they, they they got enough on film of El Camino. They knew how to defend them, and they're they so far so good from the both the defense and the offense. Punts away. It's a short one, but takes a warrior bounce out toward the 45-yard line before it rolls out of bounds on the near sideline. But either way here, I think Bakersfield College has had great field position all night, but this will be the first time they're going to start in El Camino territory. Yeah, and they got to take advantage of it. So the, the offensive line we talked about, they got to get it together here. What better time to do it than right at the start of the second quarter? Take the ball in a short field and methodically march it down the field. In order to do that, you're going to have to run the ball a little bit. Can't just throw it. Those quick those quick passes, they're kind of like throws or kind of like runs. You know, long handoffs, we like to call them. But we need to get some uh, hats on helmets there from the offensive line and move some people off the football. There's the first down play. They will run it. That's a uh, new running back. That is not Hawkins, who so far has carried the ball all night long. That is number 22 this time, Antonio Robinson, a freshman out of Tindley High School in Indianapolis with the uh, carry. A little two-yard gain there for Robinson. Got a couple uh, new bodies in there on the offensive line. Uh, their left guard position. I don't know if we got an injury to, uh, to, to Robert Trujillo, the sophomore, but we got a, uh, a freshman uh, from Chaminade in there at the left guard spot. Second down play is a great throw by Castro on the money between two defenders inside the 30-yard line. Big play to Isaac Jernigan. Yeah, nice catch there by Isaac. He, was, he, he ran a nice route, got open there on the sideline. The ball made it to him and made a nice catch. Now get back on the, on the line and let's do it again. Gain of 21, second 
gain of 20 plus for Jernigan tonight on his second catch. They're going to give again to Robinson. He's got a little hole on the right side. Takes it up for about a three yard gain. Yeah, we were a shoelace there from a touchdown. Nice, nice blocking scheme there by the offensive line and a great cut by the running back. Unfortunately, got tripped up a little bit. Three yards on the play. So far, Castro on the night on my score sheet at least is seven out of eight passing with the only inter the only incompletion being that interception that got tipped down on the far end of the field earlier. Second down now and about six to go. Three receivers in the formation will be a give. That's going to be Robinson again, but he is met by half the student body of El Camino College right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Yeah, he didn't have much place to go there, so he decided to run right in the back of his offensive lineman. <laughs> Uh, not much vision there from the running back, but uh, when you see have a wall of red in front of you and uh, and blue on the on the outside, there's not much place that you can go. Third down play here as Castro drops, looks to the near side, goes the other way. On again, that wide receiver screen, but this time El Camino all over it, and it's going to be a big loss for the Renegades. Yeah, kind of in no man's land here. Uh, I think a little bit too deep for for a field goal, but. Uh, and a little bit, uh, 10 yards is a little too long to go for it. What Coach uh, Little John, what his style is, and it looks like bringing out the kicking unit. Oh, we got a, uh, hold on there, because we've got a flag on the near sideline. This is going to be a sideline uh, issue, as they had one of their coaches was about 20 yards out on the field there. So they threw the uh, penalty marker on, I'm guessing that might have been the defensive coordinator out there, but he was out, way out in the middle of the field yelling at his team. So they're just going to give him a warning, it looks like, not enforce any yardage that first time. And it'll bring up a fourth down situation and a long field goal attempt. A little bit of a bobble in the hole. A low-line drive kick is going to be nowhere close off the right foot of Peter Dellis. They had a little trouble with the snap and getting that hold down that time. And so just a uh, long, no good field goal, and we'll turn the ball over right there. Yeah, that's probably not one we want to hang our hat on. That was a, that was a little rough effort, uh, and it all started with a, a fairly weak snap. So unfortunately, we didn't get a look, good look at the kicker's leg because he didn't have a shot to, to put a full leg into it. But that's how it goes. Holder did a nice job trying to get it down. But uh, now turn the ball back over to, the, uh, to, to the El Camino and see if the defense can't uh, do another great job of holding them out of the end zone. Here's going to be Jordan throwing. He's got a receiver on a little quick hitter route out of past the 30 to 34 yard line. That is uh, Damani Sanchez out of Carson, California. And that is actually not Jordan. My apologies. That is uh, Dylan Guerra now taking over at quarterback for El Camino. He's going to give to Bradford. He's got the left side flying out of that defensive backfield for the stop for Bakersfield College. Brock Mather. Great job by Brock there. Brock, sophomore out of Ridgecrest. Great, great athlete there. So happy to have him back. Brock played with us uh, in that middle linebacker role uh, uh, back in 2019. One of the leaders of the defense. And great to see him flying around out there. There's going to be a throw right down the seam. A lot of contact down the field, and now the yellow markers come out. So I think that one's going to go against Bakersfield College. Yeah, probably a smart move to... Uh, to commit that foul there that uh, if they didn't he's wide open and probably run underneath that football for a nice easy touchdown so good play by the by the defender there committing that foul yeah better to take the long penalty than the seven points so we'll wait for the officials to call it and mark it off defensive pass interference number 23 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Penalty there is on Mario Martinez, the freshman quarterback out of Reseda for Bakersfield College, and will set up a first down. Ball spotted. We'll see where they put it down, but looks like at about the 44-yard line of the Warriors. First and 10. 10.56 10 to go. Second quarter. 7-0 Renegades the score. It's a quick give. That's going to be... A new running back as well. No, it's Dylan Guerra, the quarterback, keeping it on that one, but lost a couple of yards in the process. Yeah, that was a great job by uh, number 99, Caden Shelton there, plugging up that uh, that defensive line, our offensive line, taking on two blockers and freeing up Mather uh, to come in there and make a nice stop on the running back. 
So once again going no huddle, second and 11. Garrow will throw. He's got a receiver out across midfield and into BC territory. With the catch is Robbie Colenzo with his second catch of the night. Picks up about, uh, oh, call it eight yards into renegade territory. Yeah, football's a game of inches, and that quarterback was one inch away from getting smacked in the mouth right before he threw the football. Quick give there to Steven Delou. Not much for him as the Bakersfield College defensive line swallowed him up for no gain. I could still say smacked in the mouth, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, smacked yeah, yeah. in the mouth. Song. You never know nowadays, and, you know, you got to be careful what you say, but uh, that's that's a football term for those of you at home. That's when that defensive lineman puts his helmet right in the face max of the quarterback or the running back and uh, smacks him in the mouth. It's what uh, John Madden for years used to call a boom or a doink or a whap. That's right. Fourth down play here now, so there will be a punt formation set up for El Camino. And this is the area of the football field. you got to be uh, ready for a fake. Uh, they're far, far enough into the uh, opposing territory. They haven't been there yet, so defense needs to be alert. Dylan Tooker back to receive. They will kick it away. High end-over-end kick, short and out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. We'll see how far up the officials come to market, but it'll be right about the 25. You know, Coach uh, Little John uh, is a defensive coach, uh, and uh, but but what he's bringing to the Renegades is the energy level. Ty Thompson's the defensive coordinator. He was uh, he started on in, in that position on Coach Chudy's staff, and he and he's uh, and he's a carryover, and he's doing a great job uh, calling the defense. But you can really see the influence uh, of uh, Coach Little John and the way this uh, defense is flying around. And he's coaching the secondary, and although, although they're young, they're doing a good job tonight so far. Doing the right things. This might be the worst field position the, the uh, Renegade offense has started with all night back at their own 25 yard line. They've been set up in great position all night. High snap into the arms of the running back, who I think was going to take it anyway. Just took it directly instead of the handoff. Antonio. And that's Antonio Robinson. Not much there, but uh, better than the alternative, which would have been a turnover. Yeah, I don't. It, definitely not the way they drew it up. And uh, unfortunately, the best thing that happened is it wasn't a turnover. We were able to get it into our hands. But um, uh, I don't think Coach, uh, Coach Dean's... Uh, too excited about the way the offense is performing right now. You're going to have to uh, get in a rhythm here. Second and 15. It'll be a fake. This is going to be Castro under pressure. Ball pops out. It's fallen on by a renegade. Back at about the 15, uh, make it the 10-yard line. But uh, again, the renegade's sort of cheating fate there by managing to hold on to that ball. Yeah, uh, left tackle Caden Cox recovered that fumble in the backfield. You never want to be the offensive lineman to recover the fumble in the backfield because it generally means you're the one that got beat, and you're the reason you're the reason that the quarterback got sacked. And and but fortunately, he didn't give up on the play. He was back there, able to recover the ball. So uh, although he's going to get yelled at, he won't get yelled at as much. Third down and long here. The gimme, the give up play. Just a quick handoff inside. A little short run, and. That'll bring up a fourth down. A little extracurricular going on. Some pushing and shoving over on the far sideline is going to draw a flag, though. See which way that goes. Looked like uh, Xavier Marshall, the wide receiver for Bakersfield College, getting into a little extra pushing and shoving with the cornerback. Couldn't see who that was for El Camino, but we'll see which way that penalty marker goes. You know how these things are. It, it truly is a toss-up. It's whoever, the, whoever drew the attention. Or maybe they hands just get the a face. Number 18. Foul. Oh, hands to the face. Number 5. White. Those penalties off tap. Four. Oh. So when all those fails and you don't know who started it, just get them both. That's the way I do it with my kids, right? Yeah, just slap them both on the hand, tell them to go in the corner, and uh, let's punt and get out of here. So uh, net zero result on that. It'll bring up that same fourth down we were talking about a few moments ago. And the Renegades will be forced to punt it out of their own end zone or right on the end line is Dwayne Hartman. Yeah, definitely not the series that the offense wanted to uh, when they came out on the football field. Oh. That is blocked and through the back of the end zone for a safety. Yeah, one of the, when you're putting it out of your own end zone, you need to expect pressure. And unfortunately, we didn't adjust to the pressure. They came right up the middle and put a real easy block. Luckily for us, it went through the back of the end zone. They didn't recover it for a touchdown. But not definitely not the series the last couple of plays for the offense and they're the punt team definitely not what we were after 
So the blocked punt that goes through the back of the end zone results in two points for El Camino College and a free kick, which means they're going to get the football back uh, with two points on the board. 7.51 to go in the first half here. 7-2, Bakersfield College's lead narrowed by the safety. Renegade fans still need to be vaccinated. I'm in awe of our new, uh, our new scoreboard here at the stadium. For those of you that uh, haven't had a chance to make it out here yet, uh, beautiful electronic scoreboard. Uh, it says Renegades Memorial Stadium. And gonna going to offer a lot of benefits. I don't know if there's some replay capabilities on that, or, but that's a big screen. I mean, they've definitely got, uh, if that's not 4K video, it's pretty close. It's, uh, it's absolutely pristine uh, quality on that video board down here, and it's you know completely customizable. And you, anybody that remembers that old scoreboard that had been there probably since the 80s. Uh, you know, you know how old it was? I, I remember when they installed it, and they installed it with a sponsorship from Texaco. That's right. And, uh, yeah. Back when Texaco was uh, a big company in town, and, and Texaco has long since uh, changed names, I think, with the Chevron, and, and uh, Chevron's still here and, uh, working in the patch. But, uh, but yeah, great, great new scoreboard there. As Sanchez will take the kick at the 30, fumbled it for a moment, gets it back, and takes it out to about the 37-yard line where El Camino College will take back over first and 10 after that safety. A lot of improvements to the old uh, Memorial Stadium. Uh, brand new, brand new turf field uh, looks great. The new track is amazing. Um, looking across the way here, we can see the construction that's going on in the new uh, gymnasium and field house. Really going to be a spectacular campus here in the short run. Guerra still in there at quarterback for El Camino gives to Bradford. That is a short run up the middle. Looks like the ball came out. We'll see. It looks like they blew it dead before. The ball came out, but a renegade came up with that football at the end of the play there. Yeah, the ball did come out. The ball was recovered by the renegades, but unfortunately, I don't think the officials are going to call it or are going to see it that way. But they're going to have a conference here and uh, see if we can't convince them otherwise. Coach Littlejohn's trying. At least they're talking about it. It seemed pretty cut and dry at first. I thought they just blew it dead, but at least they're going to have a conversation. No indication yet. Looks like the man in the white hat's about to address us. While the ball was loose, inadvertent whistle. Our only option in this hot is to replay it down first down. Oh, oh the old inadvertent whistle. Oh. You can hear the boo birds the coming whammy. out from across the way. No, Hold on, let me cover my down. mic. Boo. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Nobody likes the inadvertent whistle. The inadvertent Well, that's the one way of saying, yeah, we messed up. They'll just replay the down as the result of that. It'll be Bradford again, skipping over a man near side. Ran a long way sort of east to west, but not a whole lot of north to south gain. He might have picked up a yard on that. We got about, we got about nine or ten, uh, or excuse me, Six or seven uh, defensive linemen that are going to rotate in all game, and and one of the things your advantages we're going to have out there, we're going to have a fresh defensive front to keep applying pressure on this uh, El Camino offense. There's one of the uh, wide receivers the screens, double pass. and they're going to try the double pass here, and not a lot going on. There. He's got a ton of running room now on the near side, though, across the 40, out to the 45 yard line, and that is, uh, let's see, who is that? That is Dion Moore out of Inglewood, California, six foot one wide receiver, looked like. Like he was going to throw, didn't like it, it wasn't there, took it himself for a gain of about seven. Yeah, we did too good of a job uh, defending against that double pass, and uh, unfortunately the scramble was able to get a nice gain out of it. But uh, third and short, see if defense can't put together a scheme here to put some pressure and uh, keep uh, uh, force a punt here for the, for the Renegades. Bring a third down and short, as Chad mentioned. So this will be a this will actually be a real good opportunity to see that sort of mono and mono offense against the defense and see who can outpower who. Because you've got to you got to figure third and short, even as pass happy as these guys are, this is a, this is a cut and dry running situation, right? Yeah, it, it, it should be. Um, and, and I think, but you're, one of the problems that you're going to have is when you with that offense, as you can see the splits. When you have to get a yard, it's not that easy. Most offenses can get foot to foot with their with their offensive line and create a wedge and a wedge block situation and really move that line for a yard. Um, El Camino's one on one blocking here, and all you got to do is beat the guy in front of you, and you can make a stop. And he is going to make up the first down there. A quick little spinning run across the uh, line of scrimmage picks up about two when they needed one, and a first down. 
man down on the field for El Camino College, one of those offensive linemen. Yeah, you hate to see that. Uh, this guy's put in a lot of work uh, getting ready for the season, and they've got a, a lot riding on uh, their ability to perform. You know, most of these guys are trying to get a scholarship um, to pay for their education to move on to the next level. And when you see a guy, anybody go down on the field and, and grabbing at a knee, knee, knees aren't something that you can pop right back from. And uh, hopefully he can, but uh, it's unfortunate, and uh, you feel for him. So uh, hopefully he can uh, pop back up and get in the football game. That's Jose Aceves, the six foot two, three hundred pound offensive lineman out of Junipero Serra High School in Gardenia. Down on the field for El Camino. Six forty on the clock. Clock is stopped here, second quarter. So we've got a about halfway through this second period of play this afternoon. The sun just beginning to set field now is all in shadow. We started off the game, if you'll remember, a few moments ago with uh, long stretches of sunlight and then uh, more and more of the field covered in shadow. It's now completely in, in the shadow, so a very even playing field down there. Nobody's looking into the sun at this point. Lights are on, just beginning to take effect as the sun drops behind the hills on this Saturday night in Bakersfield. They have the Savis is up down there on the field, so they will help him off. They are having to, looks like they're going to carry him off Ooh. the field. That's not a good sign. You can't put any weight That's at not all. an easy job. That's a big boy. Yeah, no, no joke about that. Six foot two, 300 pounds he's listed on the roster, and we all know those numbers are seldom inflated. If anything, they, they may be deflated. Especially when you're on the offensive line. Everybody, everybody else inflates, uh, inflates their size numbers, but the offensive line tends to be like a driver's license. You know, you like to get under the 300-pound mark. So you, see, <laughs> you always see offensive linemen weighing in at 299 or 298. Uh, you know, uh, they, they think, but anymore, that, that's a light offensive lineman. They're weighing in at 388 yeah. or 398. So first down play here for El Camino. They're going to fake, and Guerra is going to throw. Not a lot of pressure by the Renegades. He had time as he now scrambles out to the left. will keep it into Renegade territory across the 50, diving down to the 44-yard line of the Bakersfield College Renegades. A nice play to keep it alive by Dylan Guerra, the quarterback. Yeah, I saw a few lobster blocks out there by that offensive lineman. They were doing a good job of uh, holding our defensive line, not letting him get to the, uh, get to the quarterback. Uh, I don't want to sound like uh, there were any fouls committed there, but uh, I could see him from here. Unfortunately, the, the referee couldn't. They were just too close, man. Penalty marker comes out, and the whistle's blown before the play. Looked like a false start. False start. Offense. I mean, I think what I need from here, Brian, is a is a flag, and then I can just throw the flag when I see the penalty, and then help him out a little bit. Yeah, give him the assist. I think it, I think that's yeah. Fair. I think some of these uh, officials, I mean, they're running a little thin crew now. I don't, you know, I don't know. You hear trouble getting officials, so maybe I could help him here and just start throwing flags when I see the fouls committed. It's quite a heave from here. We have to see if we can. Uh, it'd have to be a pretty heavily weighted uh, flag to get down there. I think from or here. Or maybe I just call down and have him fire the cannon. There you go. <laughs> get their attention. Second down and eight. It's going to be Bradford off the left side. He's got a little bit of a gap, but boy, just holding on for dear life was one of the uh, renegade defensive linemen there. Sort of wrapped him up and then just held on. Yeah, El Camino's found something that's starting to work for them. Uh, they're, they're running the football. They're able to get uh, positive yardage. Uh, they've done that uh, uh, quite a few plays here. Big down for the defense, third and five. Let's see if they can uh, put together some pressure here and, and uh, get them off the field. That was Dylan Parcher, the defensive lineman out of Bakersfield. Christian, nice quick play. throw and broken up and knocked down by one of the middle linebackers, sort of just dropping back in coverage there. That's Meyer Simmons, actually a defensive end out of Frontier High School, who dropped back from his defensive end position and just batted that one to the ground to bring up fourth down. Yeah, he's watching the eyes of the quarterback, and he was uh, got his hands got his hands up in the throwing lanes and able to. Uh, uh, Probably uh, save uh, a completion there. So great job by the by the D in there. Couldn't get the rush on the quarterback, so got in the in the passing lane and able to knock down the football. Good defensive play. Good, uh, a good ball play. Ashton Thomas once again deep for the Renegades at his own 10-yard line. High spiral kick. He calls for a fair catch as it takes a bounce into the end zone. So a uh, pretty booming punt there by the West Covina, or rather the, uh, sorry, about the uh, the El Camino punter there. Really put a leg into that one and maybe just a little too much, put it through the end zone. 
Yeah, I thought maybe the wind uh, got a hold of it, but I'm looking down at the at the, the half-mast uh, flag here at Memorial Stadium, and it doesn't look to be moving too much down there on the field. So Yeah, it's um, definitely blowing a little bit more up here, it seems like, than it is down on the field. Okay, let's see if this, let's see if the offense can get it together here. We need it. We got five minutes to put a nice drive and some more points on the board. Going in with the uh, five-point lead isn't good enough. We need to put some uh, points on the scoreboard here. It's going to be a give. A nice run by Hawkins. He's got the right sideline. He's going down that sideline. Get it! The fifty-one man to get it. Skips oh. and just gets tripped up at the twenty-five yard line. Is nice Zach run. Hawkins with a huge run? It's about a 55-yard gainer for Zach Hawkins. Yeah, I was trying to make uh, heads of the uh, offensive personnel. I think Castro's been substituted at the quarterback position. I, I can't see. Uh, looks like that might yeah, be Richard Lara, number 12. 12 is in there at quarterback. Lara, yeah. And yeah, that's so going to be a little dive play. Lara was our start. Lara's out of uh, East Bakersfield High School. He was a starter a couple years ago, uh, last time the Renegades played. He had some playing time, uh, actually. And uh, he was one of the two that was in a battle with Castro. So I don't know if this is some planned playing time. Um, or coach thought might need a little bit of spark. But good to see him in there. So it is going to be Lara now giving to a, uh, and that's a big loss, and a penalty marker comes flying in at the end of that play. That's uh, Alexander Acarabito out of North Hollywood with the uh, carry. Yeah, the double Rangers. whammy there. Offensive lineman got beat, and he committed a foul, and his guy made the tackle in the backfield. So uh, not, not, not what you want to do when you get down in the red zone. What, the cardinal rule of an offensive lineman, when you're in the red zone, don't go out of the Number red zone. Number 51 of the offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. You're playing second down. So the good news is they get second down over. The bad news is they're going to do it from 10 yards further away. It'll bring up a second down and about 15 to go for the Renegades now. Richard Lara remains in there at quarterback. 29-yard line. Acarabito in the backfield with him, three receivers. Lara rolling out by design to the right, looking downfield, jump pass. He's got a receiver on the far sideline. That is Isaac Jernigan tiptoeing the sideline for the catch for a gain of about 10. Nice little design roll and throw. Picks up 10, brings up a third down and six. Number one, Isaac Jernigan. Again, down to the 21 yard line. It'll be third. Jernigan's six. third catch of the night. Hawkins back in there in the backfield for the Renegades. Lara drops to throw again, looks left, fires left. He's got Jernigan near side this time at the 25. Inside the 20 to the 15, down near the 10 yard line is Isaac Jernigan. They're going to spot the ball right there for a renegade first down. Good job by the offensive line there, uh, creating a pocket for the quarterback to throw. And Zach Hawkins picked up the uh, pick up the rushing uh, linebacker and assisted there on the on the protection and gave quarterback uh, Lara enough time to make a nice completion out here to Jernigan. So it'll set up a first and goal for the Renegades. They're going to give Turn Hawkins near side, cuts it back up the middle inside the 10, down to about the 7-yard line. Pick up a 3 on the play for Zach Hawkins. Got the little slippies out there. The, the turf, uh, you know, it's that artificial turf with the it's got rubber pillar stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, the little tire pieces or whatever it is. Uh, it gets a little slick at times, and sometimes it's tough to plant and cut. And I think we're seeing that a few times. Both sides of the football are, are, uh, are slipping out there, but... Um, yeah, and I'll tell you what, if you've never set foot on that turf, it is a funny feeling when you walk on it for the very first time at any artificial turf, even this, this new stuff. And it's, it's done that way on purpose. I, I uh, worked for a while at SoFi Stadium, the new NFL stadium down in Inglewood. And, you know, the very first time I walked out on that field, an NFL field, right? And I walked out there and you go and you run around a little bit because that's what you want to do. And, man, you slip it and slide and stuff's flying up out of the turf. It's just a very weird, squishy kind of feeling. Yeah, it's got a little more give, I think, than natural grass and uh, a little more spring. But when you're, when you're a big guy... Uh, Gives not always the best thing. You want solid footing. <laughs> Bigger they are, the harder they fall, right? Third down and goal here. They've got Marshall in motion. Lara rolling out to the right. He's going to tuck it and run inside the five, diving down to the two-yard line, but they will hold him out of the end zone. 
I think he made the right decision there, uh, pulling the ball and uh, and running it. But uh, he, what he saw closed really quickly. A uh, good job by the El Camino defense there, closing on the football. And uh, now it's uh, fourth down and two to go from the from the two yard line. We'll see what uh, they call the timeout. We'll see what the coaching staff's going to do here. Um, so, yeah, Renegades do take their first timeout of this first half. 1.46 to go on the clock. Bakersfield College leading El Camino 7-2 here in the 2021 home opener. The first football game for Bakersfield College in 665 days. Thank you, COVID-19. Oh, we said we weren't going to say that word. Oh, sorry. My bad. Oh, okay. At least we're not wearing masks. Because we're outdoors, yeah. You know, we're out here in, in in a nice outdoor sitting, a seating. And uh, speaking of sitting, um, there's plenty of seating, so you can keep social distance if you want to come out and support the Renegades at their next home game. But uh, beautiful atmosphere. You smell the kettle corn popping. Uh, you hear the band playing. You hear the cannon going off. You hear Carl Bryan up there, the PA uh, uh, announcer, uh, doing his thing. And Wear your red. Come out and support the Renegades. Uh, the coaching staff would love to have you out here. The players would love to have you out here. Um, and it's we we've got a great thing here in Bakersfield, in Kern County, with the Bakersfield College Renegade football program. We got the best facilities in the world, and we we would love to have the support. I say we because I'm a Renegade. Love to have the support of of everybody in Bakersfield sometime this season coming out here. Tickets are cheap, um, but it's a great family experience. Bring your kids; they'll love it. I promise. Renegades are going for it. Fourth and goal from the two. They've got everybody in the backfield. They're going to throw. Laura under pressure. A little jump throw toward the back of the end zone, and it is too high and incomplete. So a lot of pressure there. An interesting play call, Chad. Fourth and goal from the two, and they do sort of a play action, but you got everybody bunched up in the backfield. By the time the play developed, there just wasn't anything there. Yeah, and I don't know that we took the time to develop the play action. Um, the formation said we were going to run the football, but none of our actions uh, after the snap uh, said we were going to run the football. So it didn't fool the defense. Uh, they were ready for it, had everybody covered, put pressure on the quarterback, and so we turned it over on downs. Unfortunate, we needed the points on the board there. Uh, I do think that uh, going for it, it says the right thing, it sends the right message, but uh, we would like to put some points on the board there. Now you've got an opportunity for your defense to make something happen as they start in their own end zone, but that is not going to be what happens. Instead, it's going to be Bradford cutting out for a big gain out across the 10 and a first down is Stephen Bradford Jr. Bradford, with the exception of that one 30-yard run, has been held pretty much in check, but they just continue to feed it. First and 10 here, empty backfield. They're going to throw. Catch is made, or did it bounce? It is going to be a catch out across the 20-yard uh, line. Right off his shoe tops, taking that is Ernest McDaniel. Yeah, the, the back judge here, uh, he but got he better eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had better eyes than the, the guy standing right, <laughs> right next to the catch. He saw it bounce like I did up here, so... Incomplete pass. Here we go. Second and ten. I think we can. I think we can do a good job here. Let, we need a turnover. Let's get a turnover, Brian. Empty backfield. Man in motion. They're going to. That's Bradford. They're going to fake to him. Now taking it himself is going to be the quarterback. That is uh, Makai Jordan back in there, the starter tonight, as he scampers forward for a gain of seven. Brings up a third and short. Yeah, safety Jalen Lawson came up, made a nice tackle there. Big body get safety. Uh, good to see him out there performing. Reminds me a lot of Harrison that we had a couple years ago. Third down, nowhere to go. He ran into a wall of red, including linebacker Brock Mather out of Ridgecrest up there to make the tackle along with uh, one other renegade that looks like Meyer Simmons, the defensive end we talked about earlier in there on that tackle as well. It'll bring up a fourth down and a timeout. Looks like Bakersfield College wants to talk about it with 40 seconds to go and a fourth down. So hopefully what the coaching staff's doing here is they've seen the last couple times that El Camino has punted. Without trying, we've put a lot of pressure on the punter. And we got a shot at going after it here. And, and I, I think what you're going to see is the coaching staff uh, drawing up a punt block over there, getting this, their team ready, telling them, block the ball, not the punter and uh, get some nice clean uh, legs on the ball, block this punt, so we can either A, get the safety, the two points back, or recover it in the end zone for a touchdown. So Bakersfield College taking their time here in these last few seconds before the half. They've got a uh, sort of clinging to a five-point lead. It looked as though, at least early in the ball game, that the Bakersfield College offense really had 
the advantage in this one, but then everything gets kind of slowed down just a little bit after that first score, and now a 7-2 to ball game. They're about to get the ball back with 40 seconds to go, one timeout in their pocket, and you, hope, you would think, even if they don't block it, presumably pretty good field position. For sure. We should, and, and if they do put it, and that could be what they were doing here. It looks like they are going to bring the pressure, though. Everybody at the line of scrimmage, let's see if they're going to come or not. Thomas back deep to receive the Warrior punter on his own goal line. They got a piece of it and blocked it. They did exactly what they drew it up. It's going to be picked up there by uh, an El Camino player, but that's a just a uh, dead ball there. Bakersfield College did get a piece of it, though, but uh, didn't go exactly the way they had planned. Now that was Nostradamus. That way, yeah, you, yeah, you nailed that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that pressure, uh, saw that opportunity there uh, earlier, and Dylan Tooker came off the corner, really fast player, has the speed to get there, and he did. He laid out and made a nice play on the football. Um, once that ball's touched behind the line of scrimmage and goes on the other side of the line of scrimmage, it's a dead ball, so the other team can't recover it. Uh, we could recover it and return it, um, but but once the uh, once the kicking team recovers it, um, it's a dead ball. So that's what we see. They recovered it on the 25 yard line, and we got a real short field. Fortunately, we only have 31 seconds, but see if we can get some points on the board. 31 seconds in Bakersfield College. I said one. They are out of timeouts. That was my mistake. It's going to be Lara staying in there at quarterback under a little bit of pressure. Tucks it, rolls out to his left, still threatening the throw, just trying to get out of bounds and stop the clock. It does so with 23 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, didn't quite uh, have anybody open down deep. I had a couple intermediate routes. Uh, both of those were covered. Okay. Looks like a timeout called here now by... Please put 22 seconds on the clock. Oh, they're going to 22 seconds. Add a few more seconds to the clock. So it's, it kept running after the play was over. So resetting it to 22 seconds here in this first half. They're just waiting on the uh, brand new high tech digital scoreboard to update. And it's done so now they'll whistle that ball into play. Second down and 12. Richard Lara, the quarterback from the shotgun, drops to throw. Plenty of time. He's at near side. He's got a receiver in the end zone. Out of the hands of Lauren Johnson. Eight. You know, Lauren did a good job uh, getting free to make that play on the ball. Uh, had, had a defender right in his lap when he was trying to get his hands up for that. And unfortunately, wasn't able to bring it down. But nice play there. Now we got 16 seconds left. It's third down. We, should, we need to pick up a few yards here because if we can't get the first down or the touchdown, we need to be able to put three points on the board. Well, you still got to be able to stop the clock as well. So they're going to have to get right up on it and, and go. That's going to be the key here as well. From the shotgun, it's going to be Laura. Again, time. Tops is it up in the air, incomplete. So Lauren Johnson cutting inside. The ball was thrown outside in that situation, incomplete. Brings up a fourth and long, and there is a penalty marker down on the far sideline. believe that was going to go against hey, Carmina. On the defense, five-yard penalty remains. So the Renegades catch a bit of a break as the offsides penalty will give them another shot at third down and five more yards to do it with. The clock, though, did run down to 12 seconds on that play. So third down and seven, 12 seconds on the clock. Renegades out of timeouts, clinging to a 7-2 lead as the end of the first half approaches. Laura from the shotgun. Four receivers to each side of the formation as he claps for the snap and gets it. Under pressure now, he rolls out to the right, flat out sprint now, fires it downfield, in and out of the hands of a leaping Xavier Marshall. No flag on the play. I'm rooting for one. I saw it. I wanted to, and if I had my flag here and, and, and I was part of the officiating crew, I think I would throw one. Matter of fact, I know I would, but they did it. Letting them play out there. I would need to do a better job of getting somebody on the football. This will be about a 40-yard field goal attempt for Peter Dellis, who, by the way, holds the all-time school record at Garces with a 54-yard hit uh, field goal last season as a senior during the, uh, the shortened spring season. He set that mark. There's Better the snap. snap. There's the hold. A line drive kick's got the distance. Is he enough? Yes, it is. Right. Peter Dellis adds three for the Renegades as the first half comes to a close. Bakersfield College 10 
And the Warriors of El Camino College 2 at the end of this first half of play. I believe we are going to go down to the third member of our broadcast team. That is KGET Zone, Taylor Shaw down on the sideline. Taylor, into the first half. Well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, I'm standing on the sideline here. We are just waiting for Coach Little John to come by. We're going to hopefully talk to him. A little bit of excitement that just took place. Obviously, a field goal to end the half there. Like I said, we are just waiting for Coach Little John to make his way down. But the Renegades, their offense started off hot. Fans. They went for the fourth Still down. The, uh, they went for it on Baker the fourth Steel down there. College Couldn't convert nurses. the touchdown. Then Having their next offensive possession, the they were able logo. to get the field goal. Again, we are uh, waiting for Coach Little John to uh, come down. And Coach is coming right now as we'll walk over. Coach, how you doing? Oh, my word, I tell you. <laughs> no, it's a battle. We knew they were a good team, obviously. And like I said, those guys up front on D-line, you know, they're really good. So we got to keep, we got to give those, uh, our offense and our quarterback a chance to protect. Or they got to protect and obviously give him a chance to get rid of the ball. We got to tackle better. I mean, plain and simple. We just got to tackle better. So, uh, Chad and Brian, we're talking about a very aggressive offense today. You said pregame that this was a new look Renegades team, and you guys are showing it. Well, we got to show a little bit more. Obviously, we got to we got to complete some things, and and uh, but we got to keep the defense on their heels, and we got to be aggressive and get the ball in our playmakers' hands. All right, coach. Thank you so much. That's gonna do it, and we're gonna have our BC halftime report after the break. Californians, you've got a big choice to make by September 14th. Governor Newsom has spent the past year and a half protecting California communities. Now Republicans are trying to recall him from office and overturn common sense COVID safety measures for healthcare workers and school staff. Your vote could be the difference between protecting our kids and putting them at risk, helping Californians recover or taking us backwards. Protect California by voting no on the Republican recall. Looks like someone got a new truck. I bought it online. It was so easy. Wow, online? I wasted an entire Saturday of truck talk at a local dealer when we bought our new truck. They should have bought it at Burke. We make online car buying easy and confident. From selection to financing and delivery to your home. And committed to take care of you 100% of the time, online or in person. Jim Burke Ford. We aim to give our customers a reason to say, I bought it at Burke. Hi, I'm Adela. Hi, I'm Ariel. And we're here to remind you that it's never too early to start a retirement plan. My family and I were looking for a retirement plan that could fit our family budget. And also a legacy for our children. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of you guys. That's right. No matter what your budget is, we can help you start to save. What if there was a way we could grow your retirement plan with absolutely no risk? Mention this commercial for a free retirement snapshot. Hey, come visit us. The Red Door on 17th and Chester. And welcome back to Memorial Stadium here at Bakersfield College tonight. Brian Thomas, Chad Manning. We heard from Taylor Schaub a few moments ago at the end of that first half with Coach Little John. And, Chad, everything we talked about in that pregame show seems to be coming true with the exception of maybe we expected just a little bit more fireworks out of this Bakersfield College offense. Yeah, right now a little sloppy. Um, first game jitters. Uh, I don't think we're gelled on the f offensive line like we need to be. We're not giving the, the quarterback the time uh, to throw the football. He's got to be able to see the field. He's got to have time for the routes to develop. He's got to be able to see the open receivers and, and, and got to be able to get them the ball. And uh, But that you're, that's to ex be expected early in the season. There's a lot of communication that happens there on that offensive line. They got to work together, and when you got very limited practice time like we've had because of COVID, um, it's not just running routes and throwing the ball down the field. You got communication. You got to pass off blocks. You got to you got to read the defenses, and they'll get it they'll get it straightened out. We got they got the talent on the offensive line to be able to get it done. Uh, just need just need the time to be able to work through some of those uh, difficulties, and they're going to do some work there in the halftime in the in the locker room, and I think you're going to see a little bit better performance in the second half. Well, the recap of the scoring pretty simple. It's a 10-2 ball game. Bakersfield College out in front. They jumped out in front early. A little two-yard run by uh, Hawkins. 
in that first quarter to give him a 7 nothing lead. Now, that was set up, of course, by a long pass play and then a pass interference penalty in the end zone to put him on that two-yard line for Hawkins to sort of plunge in. Bakersfield College up 7 nothing at that point. A blocked punt through the back of the end zone gave El Camino their only points to this point, the two-point safety there, to make it 7-2. to two. And then Peter Dellis, the former Garces kicker, coming in and adding three points at the end of the first half with a long field goal. And that's where we stand now, 10-2 to two at the half. Bakersfield College, if there's one thing that you can absolutely hang your hat on, though, in that first half, is that defense was absolutely stout. Yeah, they were flying around, they are hitting the ball, and they're the ones that gave the offense the opportunities to put points on the board. They gave them a short field on several occasions, and two of those occasions with the block punt, and then uh, the ball at the 45-yard line, they were, we were able, the offense was able to drive the ball down and put points on the board. But that defense is flying around. They're keeping El Camino out of the out of the uh, end zone. Uh, they're doing a good job, and, and they got a talented front in the front seven, and their secondary is playing well tonight. Uh, the defense is really the star of the game. Well, that is our halftime report from Bakersfield College. We're going to take a little break here, catch our breath, and we'll be back with the second half of football right after this. Bakersfield College leads at 10-2 at the half over El Camino here on KGET. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. The Labor Day savings on appliances, furniture, and mattresses are in their final days. Now through Monday only at Earners. Don't miss out on exclusive savings like this front load laundry pair, now $6.99 each piece. Or stainless steel refrigerators starting at only $7.99 with up to 12 months special financing. So if the best prices and savings are important, don't miss the final days of Earners Labor Day sales event. Always trusted, always Bakersfield. Looks like someone got a new truck. I bought it online. It was so easy. Wow, online? I wasted an entire Saturday of truck talk at a local dealer when we bought our new truck. They should have bought it at Burke. We make online car buying easy and confident. From selection to financing and delivery to your home. And committed to take care of you 100% of the time. Online or in person. Jim Burke Ford. We aim to give our customers a reason to say, I bought it at Burke. They're not sorta of big, they're torta big. They're not sorta of tasty, they're torta tasty. Introducing Del Taco's new epic tortas. Try chicken BLT, crispy chicken Caesar with guac, and carne asada with queso. Del Taco's epic tortas, they're totally awesome. Del yeah! For the 2021 California recall election, all Californians will be able to vote safely from home. Every active registered voter will receive a vote by mail ballot with a unique barcode. You can track it using Where's My Ballot and you'll receive automatic notifications by text, email, or voice call to let you know the status of your ballot once you mail it, drop it off at your polling place, or at a drop box. Vote by mail ballots. Simple, safe, secure, counted. Learn more at vote.ca.gov. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here on the grounds of Bakersfield College. I'm 17's Taylor Schaub. Chad and Brian are catching their breath right now, and this gives us a time to look at Memorial Stadium, the famed arena that has been a pinnacle place for people all across Kern County to come and watch our best athletes perform on the gridiron. And there have been some amazing upgrades that have taken place over the last two years since fans were able to return to the stands. Some of those upgrades include the concession stands, things you don't think about, but when you're in line, you're hungry, you want something, the concession stands, the restrooms here, the scoreboard. This thing is absolutely insane. The old scoreboard was from the 90s. This one has been upgraded. So is the lights, they're LED. You probably saw that shine tonight. And as Keith Ford, the Associate Athletic Director said, this is a real game changer for Bakersfield College. All all this new construction and renovations going on and people who haven't been here, I mean, they're in for a surprise when they get here. And I think, you know, 
like I said, when they come to our office, they're, they're pretty happy with what they're seeing and they can't believe how much has changed in just two years. There's going to be a brand new athletic complex that's coming in 2023. That's where the new locker rooms are going to be staged as well here at Memorial Stadium or actually adjacent to Memorial Stadium, I should say. As we come back on camera now, just take a look at this field. I mean, think back to the old Memorial Stadium. It didn't have this beautiful turf. It didn't have these amazing lights. This is the home of the Renegades. It's a new home, but it's an old home as well. It's one that has so much history and it's back. Baker Field College is back. They have a 10 to 3 lead against the El Camino Warriors, and they'll be back coming up in about 10 minutes. But we'll be back after the break with more of our halftime report. The day can wait. Enter the Golden State with real California dairy. Hello, Californians. You've got a big choice to make by September 14th. Governor Newsom has spent the past year and a half protecting California communities. Now Republicans are trying to recall him from office and overturn common sense COVID safety measures for healthcare workers and school staff. Your vote could be the difference between protecting our kids and putting them at risk. Helping Californians recover or taking us backwards. Protect California by voting no on the Republican recall. We've been doing this a long time. We've seen thousands of auto accident cases. Between the freeways and rush hour traffic, California's roads can be a dangerous place to drive. People get injured every day. In cases of serious injury, remember, your lawyer matters. Your lawyer matters to the insurance company. Your lawyer matters to the jury. And let's face it, your lawyer matters to the result. Choose the law firm with the reputation and experience to win your case. Choose Jacoby and Myers. Bakersfield College football is back. Watch the Renegades take on the El Camino Warriors live September 11th at 6 p.m. Only on TV 17. Brought to you by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Hi, I'm Jeff Ferreira. Over the years, I've learned most people purchase solar purely based on the system price or the monthly payment. But they quickly realized that the installation quality and customer service did not meet their expectations. At Jeff Ferreira Home Energy, you get it all. The best price, the best installation, and exceptional customer service. Give us a call and see how much we can save you. Plus, you'll enjoy the first 12 months of solar without a payment. So give us a call today at 1-800-SAVE-POWER. And thank you for supporting our local family business. First Choice Urgent Care welcomes you to their newest location. Now in Northwest Bakersfield, you'll find the same great service, always dedicated to providing you with high quality care. First Choice offers rapid COVID testing with results in as little as 10 minutes. And for a limited time, you'll pay zero out of pocket for rapid testing, regardless of insurance, with free testing available for uninsured patients. When minor emergencies need major attention, First Choice Urgent Care is here for you. Located on the corner of Hageman and Coffee Road. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium on the grounds of Bakersfield College. Your Renegades right now leading 10-2 against the El Camino Warriors. They scored a touchdown and a field goal in the first half. But right now, I'm standing with three members of the famed Bakersfield College uh, drum corps. And I want you guys to introduce yourselves first before I ask you any questions because it's just so great to have the band back out. Well, hello, my name is Joseph Jaquette. This is my second year here, third semester. Hi, I'm Tyler Hart. This is also my second year, third semester. And my name is Oliver Martinez. This is also my second year, third semester. Well, Joseph, I got to ask you first, how nice is it to be back out here at the game, being able to do what you love with fans in the stands and football being played? Honestly, it's like I'm being reintroduced to it for the first time again. Being stuck at home, having to do everything from videos and whatnot just hasn't been the best. There's no, there's no community for it. That's what music is for, is to build a community. And so being out here, being able to perform publicly again, 
I couldn't ask for anything better. Sports is about community, music's about community, and school is about community. And we got the holy trio here, not only with you guys, but at Bakersfield College. What does it mean to you to be able to, let's say, walk through the tailgate and perform in front of fans that just love seeing it? It's honestly amazing. Like, I was at a point in my life where I felt like I was falling out of music, and to be back with people just watching and cheering us on, it feels amazing. What about the history, the tradition of doing this at Bakersfield College makes it so special to be a part of the drum corps? Uh, <laughs> I don't have an answer for that yet, sorry. <laughs> You're all good. Yeah. I know, it's, it's a big moment it's here. Big we're, moment we're all back at Bakersfield College, but I do have to ask you, as, as we just watched that first half of football, what was that like to see football back here? Oh my goodness, I was so ecstatic over everything. I was like, yes, yes, uh, it's crazy feeling that adrenaline, being able to actually watch your team, cheer for them, and see a sport live again. That's, that's pretty crazy. A sense of normalcy back at Memorial Stadium. The Renegades lead 10-2. to 2. We'll be back with more of our halftime report after the break. KGET and Capital Dental Group want to see your funniest pet photos. Go to KGET.com and submit your photos. One lucky winner will receive a $500 prize package. Funniest Pet Photo Contest is presented by Capital Dental Group. Happy tea seven days a week. North Bakersfield Toyota would like you to find a new furry friend by visiting KGET.com. You'll find a wonderful selection of animals from the Bakersfield Animal Care Center. North Bakersfield Toyota is a proud sponsor of Clear the Shelter. 9.95 at my age? 9.95. No way. 9.95? That's impossible. Hi, I'm Jonathan, a manager here at Colonial Penn Life Insurance Company to tell you it is possible. If you're age 50 to 85, you can get life insurance with options starting at just $9.95 a month. Okay, Jonathan, I'm listening. Tell me more. Just $9.95 a month. For Colonial Penn's number one most popular whole life insurance plan, there are no health questions to answer and there are no medical exams to take. Your acceptance is guaranteed. You can't be turned down because of your health, even if you have health problems or take medication. Guaranteed acceptance? I like guarantees. Keep going. And with this plan, your rate is locked in for your lifetime, so it will never go up. Perfect if you're on a fixed budget. Sounds good to me, but... At my age, I need the security of knowing it won't get canceled as I get older. This is lifetime coverage as long as you pay your premiums. It can never be canceled. So, you get lifetime security. And for extra peace of mind, you also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So don't wait. Call now for free information. You'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record your important information and give helpful direction about your final wishes to your loved ones. And it's yours free. It's our way of saying thank you just for calling. So call now. Don't wait. Operators are standing by. Call now for free information and your free gift. Call 1-800-974-1625. 1-800-974-1625. Take the first step and lock in your lifetime rate for just $9.95 a month. Call 1-800-974-1625. 1-800-974-1625. Call now. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Back here at Memorial Stadium, Sir Elton John said it best, Saturday night's all right. And it is indeed here at Bakersfield College tonight, a beautiful evening, 10-2. The Bakersfield College Renegades leading the El Camino Warriors. Brian Thomas, Chad Manning, we heard from Taylor Schaub. Chad, what do we expect in the second half? Bakersfield College, I think, wants to step on the gas pedal offensively. Yeah, and uh, 
maybe take their hands off of the 10 and 2 position. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, I like we, the driving route. Yeah, I like it. It's right up your alley. We, we need to, yeah, we need to, uh, we need to turn it up on that offensive line, and uh, we need to get the ball in the air. We got talent at that wide receiver position. We got to get the ball into their football, in, football into their hands. You said you know Coach Little John. What's his message to the team at halftime? What's he saying in that yeah, locker room? I'm, I'm pretty sure he was positive. He's upbeat. I mean, he knows it's early in the season. He doesn't. Uh, they didn't do anything wrong. They just didn't do a lot of things right. So, um, and that's they haven't had a lot of time to practice, and the coaches knew that. They knew it was going to be a tough uh, road coming in. Um, basically, uh, they have a very condensed playbook, and that's kind of what we're after tonight. Well, we'll see if they open that playbook up in the second half. Renegade football coming up. Second half, 10-2. Renegades the score here on KGET. They're not sort of big. They're tort of big. They're not sort of tasty. They're torta tasty. Introducing Del Taco's new epic tortas. Try chicken BLT, crispy chicken Caesar with guac, and carne asada with queso. Del Taco's epic tortas. They're totally awesome. Del yeah. Are your trees not as full and vibrant as they once were? Do they look sick? Reduce the risk of property damage or injury by calling AB Tree Doctor today for a checkup. We'll analyze your tree's soil, sap flow, and use a 10-point diagnostic test to determine what factors might be affecting its health. We'll identify invasive pests, diseases, biotic and abiotic stress disorders, and then treat them to foster long-term plant growth. Reduce the risk of property damage or injury by getting your trees assessed, trimmed, and or removed. America's best arborist, AB Tree Doctor. Looks like someone got a new truck. I bought it online. It was so easy. Wow, online? I wasted an entire Saturday of truck talk at a local dealer when we bought our new truck. They should have bought it at Burke. We make online car buying easy and confident. From selection to financing and delivery to your home. And committed to take care of you 100% of the time, online or in person. Jim Burke Ford. We aim to give our customers a reason to say, I bought it at Burke. Shop Talk with G&G &G Auto Repair. What does it mean when that check engine light on your dash comes on? The check engine light indicates a problem in the engine management and emission system. It's usually possible to continue to drive with the light on, but there's a risk that the problem can cause damage to other parts and repair can become more expensive. For example, an engine misfire can cause damage to an expensive catalytic converter. It's best to get the problem resolved as soon as you're able to do so. Honest, trustworthy, proven. G&G &G Auto Repair. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. And welcome back for the third quarter of football tonight. The Bakersfield College Renegades leading the El Camino Warriors 10-2 in the home opener of this 20-21 season here at Memorial Stadium. Brian Thomas along with Chad Manning, Taylor Schaub down on the sidelines tonight here on KGET and the Bakersfield College Renegades, remember, got the ball first back in that first half, which means they're going to kick it off and we're going to see El Camino get their first shot to draw blood here in the second half. Yeah, and uh, this is the first time we got it, first time we get to come out to the stadium underneath the lights and look at the way that field is popping. Man, it looks really good. The Renegades at both ends. Uh, can't be anything but excited for another great half of Renegade football. And I got to tell you, looking at the lighting here, that is a vast improvement as well. That's LED like that's LED lighting now, not the old uh, halogen stuff, right? I mean, that's that's some. That is some solid uh, new lighting on those light standards above the stadium as well. So when we have a power outage, you mean we don't have to wait for 45 minutes <laughs> for, for them to come yeah, back on? for them to reset. All That's right. right. Remember that? <laughs> they yeah. go down. you got to wait for them to cool off and reset. Yeah. I'll tell you what else is bright is the, is the uh, uh, time clocks or the... Uh, the play uh, down, clocks, yeah. Down play clocks down in the in both corners of the end zone. You can see that from across Haley Street. <laughs> They're having to draw the blinds in the uh, residential track for across sure. the street there. For sure. Well, we got our popcorn and our and our cracker jacks here, and uh, I think we'll settle down for a nice uh, second half of football. Hopefully, the Renegades can put a couple scoring drives together, keep El Camino out of the end zone, and we can walk away from uh, from uh, Memorial Stadium with a nice win. Peter Dellis looks like he'll line up to kick it off. He's handled uh, some punt duties tonight. He's certainly he's handled both the field goal attempts, the one with the bad snap that was missed, and then the uh, one that extended the Renegade lead at the end of that first half. 
So Dellis out there to uh, get the second half started as well. Back deep to receive for El Camino is going to be Cameron Johnson and Robbie Colenzo. Colenzo's had a nice night offensively. In fact, he's got the only two catches on the only, really the only two complete passes in that first half for El Camino College. Have both gone to Robbie Colenzo. Yeah, bo both offenses are struggling to think from the same thing. Early in the season, not enough practice time. Um, I don't know. I, I, I believe El Camino was also shut down uh, because of the virus for had a shortened uh, prep. But uh, hopefully the second half uh, we get a little bit more action. And we are underway here in that second half. Short kick, fair catch called for and made by one of the up men at about the 22-yard line. Short. And that is where they will start off once again, the El Camino Warriors. Tonight, a passing team, but not a ton of success throwing the football against this Bakersfield College defense. They have had some success on the ground, but even there they've been bottled up. Stephen Bradford, who had over 100, almost 100 and a half yards last week, has been held to only about 60 on eight carries so far in this ball game. He's in the backfield again behind Guerra, the quarterback. It'll be Guerra on the keeper right side around the corner, and he ran a long way but didn't really get a whole lot of yardage there. Might have picked up four or five before being forced out of bounds on the far sideline. Yeah, he, he made the right read there. The right read on that option was to keep it, and uh, he, made it, he just couldn't quite make it around the corner. But it's still five-yard gain on first down, I would say, is a successful play. So this time they will give it, and there's a big hole up the middle for Bradford. He's going to go out across the 40-yard line before he's met with a helmet to the chest by Bakersfield College at the 42, but another big run by the dangerous Stephen Bradford. Yeah, and Dylan Tucker came in and really laid a whooping on him. They're going to throw here, heaving it downfield. Wide open receiver, but believe he threw it too far to the sideline, and he did. Couldn't quite get that tiptoe down incomplete. Yeah, and I think you can uh, uh, chalk that one up to the pressure that was put on him by number 31 there, Stephen Rowland for the Renegades. Been a nice play on the quarterback, a nice clean hit, and put enough, put enough pressure on him that that ball went out of bounds and they weren't able to complete the pass. Late substitution at running back for El Camino. They're going to give to that late substitute. Wearing number four out there is Brandon Jordan. But he's got nowhere to go as the defensive line for Bakersfield College was there waiting. Yeah, that's big number 93, Armando Ramos, out of, out of uh, the freshman out of Arizona. Really came in there, whooped his offensive lineman, and, and stuffed that running back in the backfield. Great play. That'll bring up a third and ten. Garrell will be forced to throw. Has time. Now is under pressure and is going to be brought down on the left side of that renegade defense. That is that same man, number 93, Armando Ramos, wrapping him up off that uh, defensive end position. Yeah, the play was made by 99, uh, uh, Shel uh, Caden Shelton there. He was the one that put the pressure on the quarterback, beat his uh, offensive lineman, and ran him into the arms of Ramos. Good double. Did the 2-D lineman there putting pressure on the quarterback and getting the sack. Great job by that defensive front, continuing to apply the pressure uh, here in the football game. So that will force another punt. It's going to be Isaac Jernigan, the new man deep, after Ashton Thomas was back there all of the first half. Jernigan this time is going to retreat back to his 25, now step up to the 27 where he's got the catch. He's got the corner at the 35 and scampers out of bounds there. So once again, very good field position for Bakersfield College for their first possession of this second half of football. We'll see what they do at the quarterback position. We saw Garrett Castro really for about the first quarter, and then we saw Richard Laura kind of take over for the second quarter. We'll see who comes out here. It looks to be Laura once again starting the second half here. Yeah, I'm going to scour the sidelines here and see if I can see Garrett. I don't know if there was a, a injury situation or maybe just a, um, just a preference, but uh, I see uh, Garrett standing over there on the sideline. Looks to be healthy enough. Uh, we'll see what we can do here with... Uh, there's Hawkins. He's got the corner right side across the 40 out near the 45-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds for a nice little gain by Zach Hawkins. That yeah, sure was. Uh, good, good job by the right side of the offensive line there, uh, putting a, he a, a helmet on a, on a defender and uh, giving a running lane there for the 
running back to make a nice uh, first down game. 12-49 and counting third quarter. Bakersfield College leading by 8-10-2. The score as Lara tosses it over. Shoe top catch is made. Nope, they say it hit the ground instead of Xavier Marshall scooping it off. I thought he had that one, but they rule it incomplete. It's incomplete. Well, they're trying to get the ball into the receiver's hands. You know, we haven't seen tonight, we haven't called his name, is Myron Randall. Uh, Myron's a sophomore out of Bakersfield College, or Bakersfield Christian, and there's a, he's a returning offensive, uh, a returning receiver for the offense, and haven't seen him out there in any other formation. So, uh, and I don't know where he might be. Second down and 10 as Lara takes the snap. Under immediate pressure, gets out of one, but steps right into the grip of another warrior. That's Antonio Murillo out of Culver City, the defensive lineman wrapping up Richard Lara and bringing him down. Well, I, I like to say that uh, we didn't pick up the scheme or didn't pick up the stunt, but that wasn't the case on that play. That was uh, them doing their job and us not doing ours. And yeah, it was an all-out jailbreak. On yeah, that we, we, we just uh, we, we didn't do our job there on the offensive front. So it brings up another third and long, and this has been the Renegade's sort of Achilles heel is these third and longs tonight after they, they seem to be going the right direction and then get stuck in this sort of a quagmire. This is a bad snap high. Lara somehow brings it down, but just as he does, he is absolutely met with force by Lando Brown. And I'm going to guess his parents might be Star Wars fans. I don't know too many Landos out there. Uh, but that's his third big play of the night. Yeah, we had a screen uh, screen play on, and unfortunately a high snap. Uh, and, and on screen plays, the offensive line doesn't hold their blocks. They uh, kind of fake the block and run out and get into protection. But with the, with the high snap like that, the quarterback didn't have time to get the ball and, and uh, unload it to his to his receiver out in the flat, and and there we have a, a, a busted play. So, And so once again, the Renegades will be forced to punt here. It'll be fourth down and 22. Good snap there, putting his foot into the ball. And a good kick all the way down to the opposite 20-yard line, but a little bit of room to run there for uh, number 11. And that is, uh, once again, Colenzo, who's got it all the way up the near sideline, close to midfield. So a booming punt, but all for naught as they got a great return out of it, did Colenzo. Dwayne Hartman really put his leg into that one. Well, uh, that's kick out kicking your coverage there, Brian. And uh, sometimes when you get a big foot in the ball like that, you uh, you get the ball into the hands of the return guy before your defenders can get down there in coverage. And I think that's what we have a little bit of there. So once again, the ball goes over to El Camino. And they've got a bunch formation with those wide receivers lined up behind one another on both sides, split very wide. That's Guerra still the quarterback. He looked for the screen near side. It wasn't there. He's under a lot of pressure. Gets the ball away. Has a receiver on a streak route far side. Out across the 40-yard line. And that was a very, very sort of... It was really a way to keep looking downfield under a lot of pressure by Dylan Guerra, the quarterback for El Camino there. Yeah, two of the biggest offensive plays that uh, El Camino's had tonight is where we've put we've busted their play we've put a lot of pressure on them and the scrambling quarterback is connected with a, a receiver that's continued his route and that was that happened again there and it was unfortunate because a great play by the defense and good stop there by the D-line uh, bring up a second and second and long here. Damani Sanchez the receiver on that catch on first down there or they gave them the first down the first down play was a run to Bradford for three and now it's second down and seven. They're going to fake to Bradford this time. A little pump fake by Guerra. He's got a receiver over the middle and a great try thrown behind the receiver on a sort of a crossing route there intended for Aaron McGee. And he made every effort to sort of slide and get back to that ball, but we couldn't quite reel it in. Brings up third down now and seven. You figure you'll see Dylan Guerra passing here again. Bakersfield College giving some space defensively. Sure. Under pressure, Guerra gets out of it and rolls out to his left. Here comes the defense. He gets absolutely hammered. Little dying duck down the field, but somehow able to hold on, tiptoeing the sideline. Is Dion Moore with the catch? I think that quarterback's a cat. 
Yeah. Uh, he, if, he, if he had nine lives, he spent three of them on that play. <laughs> <laughs> we should have we had him. Uh, we, great job. We, we, the Turf Monster got a rushing D in and a rushing defensive lineman a couple times. We still got a good hit on him, and he was able to make the completion. Good football play. Delayed give. This is Bradford near sideline. Has some room. Dives down to the five-yard line inside the five. Call the ball down at the four. And very close. They are going to give him first down. So it's going to be first and goal here. Looks like El Camino's bringing in their heavies. They're bringing in the, a couple extra offensive linemen. Uh, they should tighten down their splits. Yeah, there they go. You're, you're going to expect some uh, foot-to-foot uh, uh, ball carrying here. So um, here they do have a goal line offense. This is it. They get a little bit tighter when they get down there and expect to rush the football. They're going to snap it back. That is uh, one of their wide receivers sort of in that wildcat formation fighting his way toward the end zone. They're going to mark him just short at the one-yard line. Ernest McDaniel taking the direct snap there. Yeah, that was unfortunate. We, we made a nice, nice hit on him about five yards deep, and running back continued to power his feet and move it in. And they are going to dive into the end zone for an El Camino touchdown. So just like that, this got a lot tighter in a hurry. 10-8 to 8 the score now in favor of Bakersfield College. You go for two and try for tie here? Yeah, it might be a little bit too early for that, but it looks like they probably are going to. 8.48 to go third quarter, a two-point ball game. Bakersfield College has led basically since very early in that first quarter, and that lead now is in jeopardy. Two-point conversion attempt here. It's going to be McDaniel, a little jump pass, and he's got a man in the end zone for the conversion. That is Justin Sanchez, a linebacker, coming in as an eligible receiver. Ernest McDaniel with the old Tim Tebow jump pass to tie the ball game at 10 points apiece. Well, Brian, uh, coming out of the halftime, it looks like uh, two teams came out onto the football field, and one of them did what they were supposed to do, and the other one didn't. El Camino made some adjustments figured out what they needed to get done on the offensive side of the football and they were able to get it done and uh, put the point and tie up the football game 10 10 here early in the third quarter and what we saw uh unfortunately from the renegades is uh they didn't quite uh make make enough adjustments or didn't execute uh in their first series on offense and and gave the ball over to uh el camino with a short field and and, and unfortunately that's the unfortunate result for renegade fans is a tie ball game but not so, to despair. Uh, there's still a lot of game left. Uh, still early in the third quarter. And uh, maybe we can get something going here. And the Renegades will have an opportunity right now. They've got Zach Hawkins and Dylan Tooker back deep to receive this kickoff. Both back at around their own five-yard line. And a 10-10 tie. We've got a brand-new ball game here at Memorial Stadium. And both of those guys are explosive enough to change the ball game with a return here. Line drive kick taken at the two. That's Hawkins out across the 10. Cuts it back up the middle. Now back toward the right sideline. He's got that sideline for 40. Penalty marker down as Hawkins runs away with it. Down the right sideline and into the end zone for a renegade touchdown. But hold the phone. There is a penalty marker down back at the El Camino 20. Or back at the Renegade 20, I should say. Yeah, I think they're going to call get the Renegades for holding. I don't agree with it, uh, I, but arms were outside of the frame of the body, and unfortunately, I think that's what they're going to call here. Anticipate those cheers turning to boos as the man in the striped pajamas turns on his microphone. During the return, so it is a holding call against Bakersfield College. Negates a 95, 97 yard really kickoff return by Hawkins and sets up instead the Renegades offense back inside their own red zone. Yeah, when you get cuts on the return game like that where you're starting in one direction and go the other, the defender's going to react, and sometimes that, that the, the blocking team gets their hands a little bit outside the frame of their body, and that's all the officials see, and I think that's what we got there. Unfortunate for the Renegades and unfortunate for Zach because that was a great return and definitely what we needed, but let's see if the offense can't take that spark and, and move the ball down the field. Just a little quick give there. Nothing doing for Antonio Robinson. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Not much. 
else there. Bring up a second down and ten. Yard line. No gain on the play. Second and ten. Ball is at the seventeen yard line. Again, this is game two for the Renegades on the season, but their first one here in the friendly confines of Memorial Stadium. They had a scrimmage last week after a forfeit by Pierce. There's Lara. He's got the throw out to the left side. Incomplete. Quick little slant route in and out of the hands of Isaac Jernigan. Brings up a third and long once again for the Renegades. It was a nice throw. Nice route by the receiver. Just got to catch the football. See what they do here on third down. Three receivers in the set. Two to the left of the formation and the quarterback, Richard Lara. He's going to look over the sideline. Yeah, we've got to make a first count here. Can't afford two, three outs in a row. Especially this deep in the territory. Even a good punt here. For sure. They're going to have good field position. Lara, plenty of time. Now gets under pressure. Just starts left, rolls back right. He's going to get hit hard if he doesn't get rid of it, and he does. Down the field for Xavier Marshall. In and out of his hands. Incomplete. Yeah. yeah, that's unfortunate. Not a good start for the offense here in the second half. Um, good scrambling abilities there by, by the quarterback, but unfortunately, nobody was open to throw the football to. Um, Xavier Marshall made a nice play coming back to the football, but not enough on the ball to get it, to get it there in time to make the play. So that'll bring in the punt team once again for Bakersfield College. And, you know, we talked about El Camino getting good field position. Robbie Colenzo right now setting up to return this punt basically at midfield as Hartman puts his leg into it. High spiral kick since Colenzo retreating to the 40. He's got it there. Did a lot of dancing but ended up probably a net loss as the Renegade coverage team got down there in a hurry to tackle him at about the 40-yard line. Yeah, nice job by the kick cover team there. Uh, tightening it up there in cover of the punt. tackled by number 11, Jackson Sanchez. Seven minutes, 39 seconds left on the clock here in the third quarter of a tie ball game that the Renegades led pretty much from the outset up until a few moments ago here in this third quarter. El Camino trying to keep the momentum going. They've got their original quarterback, Makai Johnson, back in there, completes a pass down the near sideline inside the 30 before he is finally brought down as Dion Moore. Three. Yeah, nice ball fake there with Beyond the screen. Uh, well executed play by the by the El Camino uh, Warriors there. So a first down, Jalen Smith in on the tackle for Bakersfield College. They'll give a quick give here. That is the running back Bradford. Late penalty marker comes flying in from the offensive backfield. That's going to be a holding call against El Camino. Camino. Yeah, the defensive fronts uh, really putting some fits to uh, this El Camino offensive line. Another great job there by uh, holding by number 93. Number 71 of the offense. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Big, strong Three guy. Million. First down. And, and then the right guard's having a heck of a time keeping him out of the backfield. 93, Armando Ramos. We've called his, ni his name a few times tonight out of Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, you know, like my offensive line coach used to tell me, he's lucky to have a name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Coach Dameron, if you're at home watching. <laughs> McGuy Jordan is going to throw. They've got a lob pass out in the far sideline. And what a great job by Cameron Williams, another sophomore out of Tucson, Arizona, that same high school that uh, Ramos went to. Yeah, and that's an outside linebacker getting out there on the flats, making that play and bringing the hat. A Great six job. foot two, 224 pound dude with some speed out there yes, at that is. linebacker yes, position. Yes, he is, and he's got some experience. And those are kind of those are the kind of football plays that can change the momentum of a football game. So great job by Cameron there. So a big loss sets up a second down and 27. Might get a little worse than that as a penalty marker comes flying in. Number 76 of the offense. And it will. So make it second down and 32 instead. So I, I just noticed one of the probably one of the casualties of uh, uh, of of uh, the COVID situation. We don't have any cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 
I was expecting the take them back, take them back, way back cheer, but uh, I guess we'll have to settle for the, the group of, uh, oh, it's my daughter and her friends are down there on the sideline. Oh, they got some pom-poms yeah, going, going on. They'll the fill in. Cheering it out. There's a little pass, a little crossing route there, nicely executed by El Camino out across the 40, inside the 40, I should say, down to about the 39-yard line. Again, they had second down in a mile and only picked up about a quarter mile there. So it'll still be third down and long here. Third and about 23, call it. It'll be third and 23. As Makai Jordan rallies his team to the line, bunch formation to his right, single setbacks Bradford. Jordan drops to throw under pressure, flushed out to the right, pump fake, brings it down. He's going to turn the corner on the linebacker, take it himself, leaps a man at the 35-yard line, but is brought down there. Bakersfield College doing a great job of just staying on their assignments, and no matter what he was throwing, running, they were containing it. And they were, and, and that pressure's coming from 200 or 300-pound defensive linemen. They're doing a great job getting after the quarterback. The defensive ends are there putting on rushes. Um, he can beat one, he can beat two, and then you got the outside linebackers and the safeties coming up the field. So, great job there by the defense. Fourth and long, Jordan hurls it toward the end zone. A lot of contact down there. No flags, as there should not have been. El Camino wants one. But that contact was warranted as that ball was just up for grabs. Yeah, you're, and that's what they're trying to get. They're, they're hoping they can just chuck one into the end zone. Worst case scenario, it gets, uh, gets intercepted. That's a nice uh, punt uh, on fourth down. Or best case scenario, they get a, a get a penalty and a free set of down. So good job by the officials uh, smelling that as the game plan and uh, letting them play ball. So the turnover on downs will give Bakersfield College the ball back. Richard Lara remains in there at quarterback, the former East High Blade, taking over for starter Garrett Castro in the second quarter. And the Gates have not looked back so far. First and 10, Lara to throw. He's got Xavier Marshall out here near side. Spin move at the 35, dives forward for maybe a gain of three. Yeah, they're still working those uh, quick passes out to the sidelines. Uh, unfortunately, they're, they're, the ball's getting out there, but it's not. Uh, we're not having the success that we were early in the game with it. Uh, one of the reasons uh, the defense is uh, kind of, they're smartened up to it. They're playing a little tighter, and they're getting off the blocks a little bit easier. It's so only a one-yard gain there for Marshall, second and nine. Lara under pressure. He is going to be brought down from behind. Penalty marker comes flying down as well as he trips down at about the 37-yard line. Looks like a hold against Bakersfield College coming here. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of hard as, uh, as somebody watching the game to figure out if it's a screen or just really bad blocking. And I haven't quite been able to, yeah. to figure that out yet because... It's either a screen or it's really bad blocking or sometimes it's both. And I think here it was just really bad blocking and, uh, and we committed a foul and uh, going the wrong Number direction the and doing things like that. Ten-yard penalty from the green spot remains second down. I'll tell you a lot tonight. Both of these teams, Chad, have, have had that down marker way behind the original line of scrimmage tonight. There's been a lot of plays for losses, penalties, those kind of things on both sides all night. Yeah, and I think that goes to the sloppiness of, uh, or the lack of preparation. I shouldn't call it sloppiness. It's not the team's fault that they didn't have the chance to prepare. But um, early in the season, the defense is going to be a lot further ahead than the offense uh, uh, from a timing and a preparation standpoint. And then when you when you cut out half of your uh, camp and aren't able to practice, you're basically, you know, two weeks behind and having to play a football game with, without having uh, the ability to get better at what you're doing. And football's a game where in order to get better, you have to have the repetitions. And uh, unfortunately, they both, well, at least the Renegades haven't had a chance to do that. Another of those third and longs, Lara has time, now has to step up. He's going to have to run it himself, tucks it at the 30-yard line, but is dragged down before he even gets back to where the original down marker was on this drive. So to bring up a fourth and about 13. Yeah, we're really struggling here uh, on offense. Um, we're not getting open down the field, and we're not giving our quarterback time to uh, to find a to, to find a receiver or throw the football. So, um, need to make a few adjustments and and do something and do it a little bit better. Don't say you have to do anything different. We just got to do a little bit better. So once again, Dwayne Hartman, who's had his share of punt duties tonight. He is out there to put another one in the air with Robbie Colenso, the dangerous receiver, waiting deep. 
End over end kick takes a bounce for the Renegades at the 40 and rolls all the way down close to the 20 yard line. So a nice bounce there on the punt off the right foot of Hartman. Yeah, the way things are going tonight, I think we're going to need the help of the defense to put some points on the board. Um, this is a defense that can do it, but we need a turnover, maybe a turnover for a score here to change the, the momentum of this football game. The offense is struggling. Uh, they're not able to move the football. And if and uh, with the tie ball game, if the Renegades are going to pull out a win, we're probably going to need some help from the defense, either with a short field on a turnover or maybe a, a, a fumble recovery for a touchdown or sack fumble strip for a touchdown or pick six. I'll, I'll take any one of those three. Brian. You've been Nostradamus a few times tonight. Let's do it Let's right now. Can pay off once again as the El Camino offense comes back out there. A timeout called before their first down play. So the Renegades use the first of their second half timeouts. They'll have two remaining. And those are things you always kind of want to just store in the back of your mind because if you get down to a clock management situation in the waning moments of a game, those timeouts are what can either make or break you. So it's just something to keep in the back of your mind that the Renegades burn one in this situation and will have just two left if they get in to that situation a little later on. For sure. Uh, timeouts are critical. Uh, they're there for a reason. Um, use them when you need them. Don't don't take them home with you. But uh, you're right. If, if you need them and you don't have them, uh, it can cost you the football game. So it's nice to uh, be judicious with them and use them when you when you absolutely have to. And Coach Little John, I think he thought uh, he didn't like what he saw and wanted to make a, wanted to make a change and uh, and burnt one here. I think what he's telling them over there in that huddle is, hey guys, you have an opportunity here to get the ball. We need to tighten up, we need to, uh, we need to do our job, and we need to get a turnover. Um, I heard him, I heard him say it. <laughs> Two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Third quarter in a tie ball game. Ten points apiece. Little quarterback draw action for Jordan on that one. Tries the right side. Renegades come up and get him about a five-yard gain for Makai Jordan. I tell you, if I'm a ball carrier, I don't want to see number three coming at me. Dylan Tooker is, he can bring the hat. Very explosive. And that's what you want at a safety. You want somebody that can cover a lot of ground quickly, not afraid to come up and stop the run, and he did exactly that. Again, the quarterback will keep it himself. Jordan on the scramble to the left side this time. He drops the ball as he takes a big hit. Whistle, officials are going to whistle it dead. But he took an absolute wallop. Yeah, that's the other safety, Jalen Lawson, uh, number five. Big kid out of New Jersey, did the exact same thing. Closed the gap fast, laid the hat, and uh, I think dislodged the football, but, uh, you know, apparently the officials didn't. Here's going to be a give. This is Bradford's going to try the near side. Not much there. Again, a sea of red. Waiting for him on this near side. Lost two yards that time yeah, at Stephen Bradford. Great job by the middle linebacker, the sophomore uh, Brock Mather there out of Ridgecrest. Came in and stuffed the lead blocker in the hole and then shucked the blocker and was able to make the play on the running back. That's classic uh, linebacker play. And great job there by the sophomore. This will be second down and 12 now for the Warriors. They're going to fake to Bradford, go the quick slant Ooh. route this time <laughs> to Dion Moore, who just got leveled after making that catch. Yeah, that was Mather again. Don't come into my house and definitely don't come across the middle. Great, great job making sure that ball did not stay in that receiver's hands. I think Dion Moore will uh, remember that number, looking for him the rest of the night anytime he dares come over the middle. I, dare, I guarantee he went back to the huddle and said, do not call that play again. Third down and long, empty backfield. Under pressure, fires crossing route. There's Moore again. Turns the corner at the 35, but a short gain is all he'll get. It'll bring up a fourth down and eight. Yeah, laying the hat out there. Great job by the renegade defense, putting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, a game of seconds again, a game of inches. Barely got that ball free before he got walloped in the back there by Steven Rowland rushing on the outside edge. Great speed there. If there's any hesitation there by that quarterback, that's a, that's a sack fumble, guaranteed. A great job by the pressure, good job by the defense. Now, got to get a, get a good return on this, good field position for the offense and see if we can't put a drive together. Ashton Thomas back in there to receive again for the Renegades, set up back at his own 25-yard line. Time out. El Camino. And now El Camino their will use the first of their yeah. three-second half timeouts. So both teams now down to two as we go into the uh, 
final quarter of this game in about 40 seconds. Yeah, I think uh, El Camino sensed the Renegades bringing some pressure there. Uh, backed up in their own end zone. Uh, Renegades had everybody on the line of scrimmage. It looked like they were probably coming again with the block. And they still may. But uh, I think El Camino's going to uh, put a little extra protection back there and tighten their splits down a little bit and see if they can't get a quick punt and get the ball off. So El Camino talking about it over here on the near sideline. Bakersfield College again in their second game of the season. They're on the road now that, to finish out the last two weeks of September. They're off to Golden West next weekend and then down to Mount San Antonio, Mount Sac the following weekend before uh, their next home game here on Saturday, October 2nd against San Bernardino Valley. So a couple weeks on the road for the Renegades after this home opener. Yeah, that's called the Bakersfield schedule. We just uh, uh, we let the, the summer pass. We give you one little hot game, and then we let the summer pass, and then come back in the nice weather in October and have some really good home football games. Well, I think we only have four home games this year, uh, which is a uh, uh -oh. high short kick, and then a very late hit over on that far sideline has a renegade on the ground over there. I believe that's Ashton Thomas, who was uh, the return man there. Yeah, he's still down, got his face in the dirt, unfortunately. El Camino seems to think that they've recovered a, a, a muffed punt. Yeah, no indication from the officials. They're talking yet. about it, though. The referee and the, one of the side judges over here at about the 40-yard line chatting about it as the renegade medical team tends to the downed Bakersfield College player. Well, the umpire's changing the ball out to the renegade's football, so that's always a good sign. So still tending to that injured renegade over on the far sideline. Again, we believe that is Thomas, uh, who got a uh, really violent hit kind of over on that far sideline at the end of that play, that punt return. And, you know, Chad, I mean, there's been talk for years about outlawing you know, or, or getting rid of kick and punt returns. They're the most dangerous plays in the game. And you see, you see the reason for that there. They're one of the only times that you see two players going full velocity in opposite directions that sort of meet up. Uh, you don't see that a whole lot. On, on regular sort of, you know, offensive, defensive plays. You see that a lot more in the return game, the special teams game. Um, and, and that's just a, uh, an example of that right there. Yeah, it, it is a dangerous... Uh, it, well, football's a violent sport, and that's the most violent uh, collision that we have in the game. You're right. Um, but f f what we do have, fortunately, is very good... Uh, very good uh, equipment and uh, safety precautions that uh, keep that collision safe for both players. Uh, that was Ashton Thomas, the uh, return man there, who is now up and over to the sidelines under his own power. As always, we thank Paul Ambulance for being here tonight. Looks like they gave the ball to the El Camino. Yeah, they did. You're right. El Camino College football, so they did recover a fumble at the end of all that. Of course, we just saw the the hit and sort of lost track of the football, but it looks like there is a fumble, and it goes over to El Camino back out there on offense in plus territory on the Renegade side of the 50-yard line. Crowd's not happy about it. Return. Folks in the press box just catching up along with us that uh, that there was a fumble there. We all kind of looked like everybody missed it. Everybody but the officials and perhaps El Camino College. So first and 10 Warriors at the Renegades 34-yard line. There's the snap. They fake one give and then give the other way, but waiting for him once again. Who else? You've heard this name a few times tonight, Armando Ramos. Yeah, great job there. Uh, I'm confused at what happened. I'm confused at how they got the football, but at least Ramos isn't confused. Yeah, Ramos knew right where it yeah, was. He, he went knows, and got it. He knows exactly where it is and uh, did a great job there uh, stuffing the ball carrier in the backfield. So three-yard, maybe close to a four-yard loss on that play brings up a second and 13. There's a fake, and they're going to throw the ball. Plenty of time now running out. We, he slings it sidearm as the quarter expires, has a receiver at the 30, and pushes forward down to the, about the 27-yard line. As you heard, the cannon and the horn indicate that the third quarter has come to a close. We have a 10-10 ball game between the Bakersfield College Renegades and the 
El Camino Warriors. We'll step aside for a quick break and be back with the fourth quarter of football in this tie ball game right here on KGET. KGET and Capital Dental Group want to see your funniest pet photos. Go to KGET.com and submit your photos. One lucky winner will receive a $500 prize package. Funniest Pet Photo Contest is presented by Capital Dental Group. Happy tea seven days a week. I believe if you're an expert in any topic, you can make it easy for anyone to understand. Let it be a PPO, HMO, Medigap, or prescription drug plan. We won't steer you in any way. After meeting with us, I'm confident you'll walk away feeling comfortable about your choice. We are Roaming Associates, Medicare Services. Give us a call. Bill Wright Toyota is partnering with TV17 to help adopt the animals at the Bakersfield Animal Care Center. There are some stylish animals looking for a forever home. Visit KGT.com to embark on an awesome adventure with a new family companion. I was getting ready to make a right turn. This car just came and hit me. I called my insurance and they wouldn't work with me, so I didn't know what to do. Someone told me, no, you need an attorney. That's when I called Mickey Fine's office. Mickey Fine and his team guided us through the steps. If I didn't call Mickey Fine, I don't think I would have got the settlement that I, I feel I, I deserve. Call my office, the law offices of Mickey Fine, 661-333-3333. Affordable furniture. Let us help make your house a home. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Archer. And while we were in that break, the first play of the fourth quarter was a little six-yard run for a first down by Stephen Bradford, Jr. It's first and ten now, El Camino. It's going to be a fake and a quick wide receiver screen over on the left side, but the entire secondary for Bakersfield College is on top of that. Not much doing. Maybe a yard gain. And it'll bring up second down. So the fourth quarter underway. 10-10 tie between El Camino and Bakersfield College here in this 2021 home opener at Memorial Stadium tonight. No gain on that previous play. Brings up a second and 10. Makai Jordan takes the snap. He's going to give a running back up the middle. It is going to be Brandon Jordan. He's going to carry close to a first down. They're going to give him the first down. A 10-yard gain by Brandon Jordan on second down is going to set up a first, not quite goal. Call it first and 10 at about the 11-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah, nice cut back uh, there. Uh, got a good... Uh, a little bit of over pursuit by the defense there and a cutback by the running back made a fade for a nice game. There's going to be another oh. give. That's Bradford who gets upended after about a three yard gain on the left side. Number 23, the ball carrier. Yeah, that was Mather again. Heat seeking missile coming across and. Uh, made by number uh -oh. 10. Look like Brock Mather once again. Another of those names we've called quite a few times tonight who sort of went low and upended Bradford on that play. Yeah, it looks like Dylan Parcher, the D lineman there, is down on the field. <laughs> Renegades uh, cycle through three or four, five, six. Uh, you know, I just pick a number, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Defensive they lineman. They, <laughs> they try to keep that D line fresh. And uh, Dylan's uh, one of the freshmen that have been working in there tonight. And uh, unfortunately, he's still down on the field. It's somewhere between a bunch and a gaggle. Yeah. of uh, yeah. defensive linemen that they cycle through. Or, or a plethora or a plethora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, got a, they got lots of them is what we're trying to say, yeah. So it'll be second down for El Camino when we come back out of this, uh, out of this injury situation. Again, Bakersfield College, we've seen a few injuries tonight. We saw one early on uh, the El Camino side. We've seen a couple here in the last few minutes uh, between Ashton Thomas and now Parcher for... Bakersfield College and you know you think some of this you know Chad we've mentioned it a few times some of this is just it's early in the season I'm sure these guys are not in the shape that you normally would be in in week two of a season due to the limit limited prep time limited practice time uh, getting ready for this season the conditioning is probably not where you would normally see it in week two of a football season 
No, for sure. And uh, there's been a lot of talk uh, in the football world, especially at the high school and junior college level, of was you know a lot of a lot of teams played uh, not necessarily in junior college, but played early last year or late last year, and then played again this year. Did we have enough time to uh, do the proper training? Was there enough time for bodies to heal and then build uh, and to prepare? Football's a violent sport. It, it takes a tough toll. It takes a toll on your bodies. Um, that's Part of the reason why you know your roster is many guys as you can. Renegades have got close to seventy, I think, on the on the roster this year. But um, <clears throat> there, there is the mentality that you got to be ready if, when there's an injury, and the next man's got to be up, and and uh, you, you know and you got to you got to move on. But um, luckily for for the Renegades, it looks like Dylan's uh, up and at him and won't be out for too long. But. Yeah, and you mentioned it. Boy, I think that's especially true at the high school level where they played that five-game spring season that lasted into May. And then, you know, they're turning right back around now three, four months no, later and coming right back out in August and September. Sure, and I think you're going to start to see some toll on some bodies here as the season moves on. Um, but that's, uh, that's just something that the teams are going to have to adjust to and have to deal with. Well, what the Bakersfield College Renegades have to deal with right now, aside from the injury to Dylan Parcher, is a very short field at their back as the El Camino Warriors are marching toward the end zone here. They've got a second and nine at their Renegades 10-yard line. They can still pick up a first down before they get in the end zone if they need it. Right up the middle is Brandon Jordan. Gets down inside the five-yard line to about the four. It'll bring up a third down and three. Again, remember where that yard, where that down marker is. That first down marker is at the, about the one-and-a-half-yard line, so they can still pick up a first without even getting into the end zone. Yeah, and they found a, they're, they're attacking the, the left side here on the outside shoulder of the defensive lineman, so as the defensive lineman's creating pressure, that running back's uh, cutting back in these... Um, <clears throat> He's the start of play side, cutting back side, and he, they've uh, found the ability to do that. Jumbo formation. We saw this earlier. That's Ernest McDaniel who came Humble. in at quarterback. Ball Humble. looks to be loose Humble. down on the field. And no indication yet. It looks like El Camino is going to maintain possession, but they're going to do so a good four or five yards back from where they started, and it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, a missed opportunity there. When the, anytime that uh, pigskin's bouncing on the turf, you want it to bounce into your arms. And we had a couple shots at it, but unfortunately, uh, El Camino was able to recover. But we did keep him out of the end zone and forcing him to a field goal attempt here. So all in all, uh, a good effort there by the defense uh, in the last later part of that drive. Number two out there on the field. Now, we've seen that number tonight on the back of Dylan Guerra, the backup quarterback, but... My gut tells me they may have a pair of them because there's also a number two listed under a kicker by the name of Noah Gastella. And that field goal is blocked. Picked up by Bakersfield College at the 25. A cutback at the 40 going clear across the field. Go, baby, go. The side is Mario go, Martinez. Baby, go. He's got a game Find the end zone. Down the right sideline, inside the 20, and finally wrapped ah. up and brought down at a, the 12-yard line. Tremendous. Blocked kick and then a return by Mario Martinez out of Reseda. All right, that's a great job. What a good effort there. I don't know, I didn't, was it Tooker that, I don't know who, I didn't get to see who made the block, but nice scoop, almost a score, but a great effort there by the uh, field goal block team to put the Renegades in the scoring position, keep El Camino off the board. That's the momentum change that we were looking for. That's the momentum change that we needed. Now, come on, offense, let's make the most of it here. So the Renegade offense now set up in the red zone already. Richard Lara still in there at quarterback. That's Hawkins in the backfield. Two receivers split near side. It's going to be a give to Hawkins. He's got nowhere to go. Now spins out of it somehow. He's inside the 10-yard line and in down to the 7-yard line. What a great play. Great awareness, great balance by Zach Hawkins just to keep that thing alive. Should have been a three-yard loss. Yeah, and unfortunately, Zach got rolled up in from behind and got his uh, got his wheels caught and uh, not good. He's down on the ground, writhing in pain. Hopefully nothing serious, but it sure didn't look good. So that will be a huge hit to the Renegades. Hawkins has had a heck of a ball game. Had a 55-yard run early in this game. Scored the Gades' only touchdown on a two-yard plunge back in the first quarter. And so having him down on that field right now is a big, big loss for the Renegades if he's not able to return. And he does look like he's in a considerable amount of pain down there. 
Yeah, he, he made a great, great move in the backfield, uh, twisting and getting out of trouble. And then as he made a cut to try to get some extra yardage, he was fighting for those extra yards and got rolled up from behind. And um, hopefully nothing serious, but Zachariah Al Hawkins. The 5'9", 194-pound freshman running back out of Granada Hills High School in Pacoima. And he is, uh, you see his renegade teammates coming down, taking a knee a few yards away. Yeah, it looks like they're looking at his uh, left ankle there. Bakersfield College medical team, after a pretty quiet first half tonight, has had uh, had their work cut out for them here in the second half. This is the third time we've seen the uh, the trainers and the medical team out there having to attend to a downed renegade here in this uh, second half of football. We've got about 11 minutes left on the clock, 11.01 here in the fourth quarter. A tie ball game, and uh, the renegades seem to be on the verge here of losing one of their biggest offensive weapons, if not... Uh, uh, maybe their their most productive offensive weapon in this ball game so far. And so we have talked. This is a pass happy team, but when you've got a running back with the skill level of a Zach Hawkins, who's taken some of the pressure off of that passing game that hasn't been necessarily hitting on all cylinders all night, and now you take that out of the mix, it just puts that much more pressure on backup quarterback Richard Lara and the uh, rest of that passing game for Bakersfield College. Yeah, and you can see that play there, what Zach brings to the football game. He was, it was, he was busted in the backfield for a three-yard loss. He was able to get out of the trouble, turn it around, uh, change direction, uh, take it upfield, and turn a th uh, three-yard loss into a six-yard gain or seven-yard gain. And um, That's some explosiveness and, uh, and athleticism that uh, definitely you're going to miss if he uh, spends any time away from the football field. So they're trying to get him up down there now. His teammates are going to come over and help him out. As the uh, Bakersfield College offensive players are going to go over there and help pick him up. And they're going to carry him off the field, as we saw happen on the other sideline early in the game. It's a nice round of applause from the crowd on hand here at Memorial Stadium tonight as Zach Hawkins heads over to the bench, and uh, we wish him, of course, a speedy recovery from whatever that injury is. It did not look particularly good. That's going to substitute in uh, Antonio Robinson, who we've seen in the backfield a few times tonight. Has carried the ball six times, but so far for a grand total of one yard in the positive by my score sheet. Looks like a timeout called by El Camino before they... Uh, Second charge get this second half. down play going. So they didn't have quite enough time during that injury to figure out what they wanted to do and have to burn their second of their three first, second half timeouts. Timeout El Camino. Oh, okay. So, you, Chad, I think you're right. It is, uh, it is 28, not 22. So that is Alexander Okarabito, the uh, freshman running back out of North Hollywood High School. Oh, man, I'm all messed up here. <laughs> perhaps coming into the backfield. Or it could be Antonio Robinson. <laughs> I can't. We'll flip a coin on this <laughs> one. It's, it's either 22 or 28. It could be. Uh, What's the saying? What's the saying? He's lucky to have an eight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chad, Chad, is, Chad is correct again. It is 28 out there. That is Ucker Rubito. Oh, there you go. Ucker Rubito. So he will take over in the backfield now. Lara remains in there at quarterback. Man in motion. They're going to flip it to him on the end of round. He's got the sideline, got the corner, diving for the cone, but is out of bounds just before he gets there. Believe that was uh, Jalen Blizzard, the freshman wide receiver out of Calabasas. Yeah, Jalen's got some speed. He's probably the fastest guy on the football team. Um, recovering himself from uh, he's been recovering from a, uh, a hamstring injury he hasn't really played much uh, in uh, practice much or uh, played much in the football game but uh, they had a little special drawn up there for him and uh, as you can see he's, he's definitely got the speed that we need so hopefully he gets back out there uh, a few more times Gates had a first down and goal on that play they're going with a big formation in the backfield that's Akarabito is going to be fighting for the goal line and stopped just short at uh, about the two-yard line, so not much of a gain, if any, there for Akarabito. Robito on the carry. 
Yeah, this is where the offensive line uh, earns their uh, earns their paycheck or earns their dinner table. Um, when you're down on the goal line with two yards to go, it's 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 time to get to business and and uh, get these guys and create a surge, move them off the line and into the end zone for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. like Arizona Rabito again, and just like that, he plunges into the end zone for a renegade touchdown. Yeah, great surge by the offensive line. They tighten their splits down. Uh, you can see the elbows from their stance just move a little bit lower to the ground, put that weight forward, come firing off the football, blow that defensive line off the line, and create enough surge to get your running back into the end zone. Good job by the offensive line, getting the job done, and scoring the touchdown there. So Alexander Acarabito from two yards away diving into the end zone to give the Bakersfield College Renegades the lead back. 16-10 pending this extra point attempt by Peter Dellis. You know, and the coach had enough confidence in his line to be able to call that play. There was nothing fancy. There was no running to the outside or any stretch plays trying to find an opening. And the extra point is through, so 17-10. The Renegades take the lead over El Camino here in the fourth quarter with just under 10 minutes to play. It's our night. We've got to carry them off the goalpost. Yeah. Into <laughs> yeah. Well, what a chain of events. And it all started by the defense, you know. Not too long ago, just a few couple short minutes ago, we were we were sitting here waiting for El Camino to go up, if not by a touchdown, at least a three-point uh, field goal. They were on the two-yard line ready to punch it in. Defense stuffed them, uh, made them uh, attempt the field goal. We blocked the field goal, we turned it all the way down to the 20-yard line a couple short uh, plays later and punched it in the end zone. And just like that, we're up we're on top uh, uh, seven points late in the third late in the fourth quarter or, or 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter so uh, great job here uh, by the Renegades and a good team effort both offense defense and special teams and you feel like it's going to be one of those kind of nights that if the Renegades pull this game out it's not going to be because of you know one unit absolutely just dominating it's because of a full team effort now the defense has been nothing short of spectacular tonight but it's really been a team effort all three facets of the game really coming into play for Bakersfield College as they tee it up with a seven-point lead and ten minutes to play short end over end kick at the 20 yard line is going to go out of bounds and of course that is going to draw an unwanted penalty and give El Camino College some very good field position yeah, definitely not uh, not what the coaching staff drew up. I think trying to put a little bit too much too much foot into it and hooked it left out of bounds. Yard penalty for the kickoff going out of bounds. Out to the 35 yard line, first and ten. So El Camino College back out there now. Makai Jordan, their quarterback. He's switched off with Dylan Guerra throughout the night, but it's been Jordan on the last three drives. He'll keep it here, takes the snap off his shoe tops, hands to Bradford, nowhere to go, met in the backfield by Brock Mather, among others. Steven Bradford on the carry. And Mather has been a machine out there tonight. He's been all over the place. Yeah, he's, uh, he's flying around. He's playing some great football. He's the leader of that defense, and, and he doesn't lead with his mouth. He leads with, the, with, leads with his shoulder pads. He's doing a great job out there tonight. Loss of two brings out, or loss of one brings a second and 11. Under pressure here as Jordan somehow slips away. He is sneaky, folks. Out across the 40. Into renegade territory before Tooker puts a shoulder into him at the 40-yard line. And another big run by Makai Jordan inside the 40 down to about the 37 of the Renegades. Yeah, and that's uh, that's how they, last week, how they uh, racked up those rushing yards, just like that. You know, the broken play, put a lot of pressure. Quarterback's got some good wheels and, and breaks free. And nice game for the El Camino Warriors. Looked like some early movement there. No call. Bradford with the run off the left side. He's met pretty early in that run by Cameron Williams, the outside linebacker, for only a short gain. Call it a yard. That's Cameron Williams. Brings up a second down and nine for the Warriors of El Camino. Second and nine. Jordan remains in a quarterback from the shotgun. He is going to keep it himself after a fake. Bakersfield College on it, but he slips away yet again down the left sideline inside the 20. And finally pushed out of bounds by Tooker 
inside the 15-yard line. I'll tell you what, Makai Jordan is slippery. Yeah, he made the right read there. He kept that ball in the belly of the running back for a long time. And then when the defense converged on the running back, he pulled it out and made a nice read up the field for a nice game. Um, it seemed to be in a rhythm here. He's got something working there uh, with that uh, uh, run option scheme he's got. El Camino down seven after having tied the game in the third quarter, and they're trying to do so yet again. That's going to be Brandon Jordan with the carry around the left side and into the end zone, I believe. Nope, maybe not. It looks like they marked him out of bounds back at about the six-yard line. He must have just tiptoed out of bounds at the six. Well, don't get nervous, Brian. We did bend down here before. A defense can tighten up and keep them out and block another field goal and return it. That's all we need to do. Brings up a second down and two from the Renegade six-yard line. It's going to be a flip back to Bradford. It's going to try the right side, but he's going to lose yardage in the process. First man that got there was Jalen Corpru. The linebacker, a freshman out of Green Hope High School in Raleigh, North Carolina. I can't understand the thinking while you're on the five-yard line and you pitch backwards five yards yeah. when you're down on the goal line. Not, not, uh, not something that I think I would call. And I think the coaching staff of El Camino would like to have that one back too. Third down now and seven to go. They will need the four-yard line to pick up the first. Bradford in the backfield with Jordan. Three receivers to the left of the formation. Single man split wide right. Here comes the blitz from Bakersfield College. Jordan's going to step up, has nothing but green grass in front of him. And he fumbled. Close quickly. And he goes down at about the five-yard line. Might be just short of that first down. And that was a great recovery by that Bakersfield College defense. He looked to have nothing but open field in front of him. Yeah, they closed it quick. A good job there by the defense. Uh, making a play on the ball carrier. Keeping him out of the end zone. Now uh, they're going to attempt a field goal here again, and uh, we've seen this song sheet before. Bakersfield College, remember, blocking the last attempt for El Camino. They've got a seven-point lead due to the Renegades. Trying to chip into that are the Warriors of El Camino. Good hold. The kick this time is up, but it is, yeah, it is through. It did get through the uprights. So three points for El Camino there makes it 17-13 Renegades with 6-26 left in this ballgame. So all we need now is a nice six-minute drive that's going to start at our own 35-yard line. And uh, five yards at a time, we'll run the football all the way down the field, take a knee to win the football game. How's that? I mean, it sounds like you got this thing drawn up. I mean, should we just easy. go home? Yeah, we should just yeah, pack, it just up pack it up Pack it up, boys. <laughs> Chad Manning with a game plan, uh, folks. Unfortunately, I don't think that that's how this game works. Uh, we're going to have to uh, see if we can't execute. And one of the things we are missing is our running back. It doesn't look like uh, Zach Hawkins is going to be going back in the football game tonight. So um, we're going to have to do it with the second-team runner. But that's okay. Uh, we got talent back there, too. So get the ball here, put a nice return on it. Hey, you never know. These are the, these are the explosive guys that are returning the football. Uh, we, we, we could uh, get some points back here real quick. Looks like they've got uh, Dylan Tooker back deep to receive along with Isaac Jernigan. They're standing inside their own five-yard line, so they've got some respect for this kicker's leg for sure. And here comes the kickoff from Guzman. Pops it up in the air, short, taken at the 10 by Jernigan. He's going to try the right side. And he will get out spinning his way across the 15 to the 20, out across the 30. He He's broken it. He, go. he is broken. He goes. It's a foot race to the end zone. Get it. That is going get to it, be a renegade touchdown. Jalen Blizzard <laughs> called his name earlier. Chad said he was the fastest man on the football team. He just got a chance to prove it. 90 yards for the kickoff return touchdown for Jalen Blizzard. It got cold in here real quick. <laughs> ah, great job, Renegades. That's what we needed. Yeah, coaches were excited about their return guys. They got a handful of them. Uh, Zach Hawkins was one that made a nice return earlier in the night. They got it, uh, got it uh, called back. And we see Blizzard uh, get his shot at, uh, at returning that football. And a great job by the Renegades changing the momentum of this football game. 
6-11 to go. Renegades out in front by 10, trying to make it 11, which is a big deal. This is a big extra point because that takes it out of the touchdown field goal, ties it, and makes them score two touchdowns to try and win it here. That's just some quick math on my part. I'll leave the math to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like Peter Dellis out there. He's hit two extra points in the field goal tonight. Good snap, good kick, and he'd have hit that from 40 yards away. Peter Dellis putting it through to make it 24-13 Renegades with 6-11 to go. And uh, to take that, that joke you made one step maybe too far, Chad, did Jalen Blizzard just put this game on ice? Oh, good. Speaking of ice, I, hey, I talked to uh, Matt Riley. The Condors are getting ready to get started again. So That's right. And they're going to have... Uh, you're going to have a good squad there at, uh, at, at Condor Town. And uh, it, nothing better than this town. And watch a little bit of Renegade football and then watch a little bit of, of Condor's hockey. And, and uh, we got it all for you. And we're going to need a blizzard to turn the field into ice. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that I call it icing it just quite yet, but he did a good job of uh, uh, turning down the temperature, let's say. Master of the segue. 6-11 to go here, fourth quarter, home opener at Memorial Stadium. And the uh, Renegades trying to keep the good times rolling on their first game in about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. Yeah, and as a fan, I'm breathing a little bit easier. I, I, I might be heavy breathing, and you might be able to hear that through the microphone, but uh, I'm, I'm, my, uh, my heart rate's come down a little bit. I am breathing a little bit easier. Um, I'm feeling better about our position in the football game uh, right now than I was uh, a short uh, two or three minutes, or 10 or 15 minutes ago. So Colenzo back deep to receive for El Camino. Dellis puts his right foot into it. And it will be the other man for El Camino. That is Ernest McDaniel trying the right side. And he's out across the 25 to about the 30-yard line. And that's where El Camino will take over, staring at an 11-point deficit to the Renegades. Clock is not their friend at 6.06 to go. And remember... They have burned two of their three timeouts. They only have one left. Looks like we've got a cramp. Yeah, another timeout. Look like a uh, renegade kind of sitting down out there holding on to that hamstring. That's the uh, other Jernigan brother. That's Isaiah. We've called Isaac's name a few times tonight. And, of course... They've got a younger brother, Ian, who's playing uh, lights out running back at Darsus right now. But this is uh, Isaiah Jernigan out of the, uh, the Bakersfield High School prospect, who looks like, uh, as Chad pointed out, might be cramping up just a little bit out there at the 45-yard line. So looking back in this one, Chad, I'll tell you, it was, uh, it was one of those games that, um, and it's certainly not over yet, but... You know, just got a little time to time to kill here. It, it was one of those games where it looked like this thing may come right down to the wire up until the last few minutes. You you called out that momentum swing on the blocked field goal, and it really has certainly uh, swung that pendulum back into the uh, Renegades' favor here. Yeah, and and the defense is they've got to stay tough. They they got to continue like they've been playing. They got to they they've got to uh, get the ball back and keep uh, El Camino out of the end zone. So. Um, Look if they can do it right here. That's Brandon Jordan. No, it's a fake to Jordan. The keeper by Makai Jordan, who is down the right sideline. And man alive, they have got to get a body on Makai Jordan. He is all over the place. The quarterback for El Camino. A good recipe to fix that is a, is a helmet by Tilker or Lawson right right in the gut of that uh, quarterback when he's on the rush. Um, they got to put a helmet on that quarterback so when he thinks about running, he thinks twice. And uh, I think that's what the what the coach is going to draw up here. Right now he is running wild as he drops to throw again on first down. Plenty of time, no rush at all. Finally, the Renegades come to him as he sidearms it out to midfield. Has a receiver there. That's Brandon Jordan with the catch at midfield. Not much of a gain there, maybe two yards. And another Renegade a little slow to get up. Right and the uh, midfield strike down there. Yeah, I think we got the crap well, monster. Uh, that might be Mather. Is that, uh, is that 10? Yeah, that's Mather. He's, uh, he's got a 
<laughs> got a cramping leg. Yeah, that is Brock Mather, who's been all over the field tonight. Believe me, that is a cramp that he has earned well tonight. Oh. And there is nothing. Boy, I'll tell you, you know, that's one of those things. It sneaks up on you, and, man, it hurts. You know, it hurts like crazy. You just feel like you're paralyzed in that muscle that uh, that's cramping up. And and uh, it's one of those who just comes out of nowhere. You, you just... Now, look, we're, we're a little older, right, and it sneaks up on you now when you're just sitting still. But, well, you know, at his age, as much as he's running around tonight and all that, you probably don't see it coming, and then it just all of a sudden, bam. Yeah, those things can wake you up out of a dead sleep yeah. at oh, yeah. my age. But, yep. Yeah, yep. <laughs> absolutely. But out there, yeah, and, and unfortunately, w w once they start they're with an EIV treatment or, or a dose of fluids, they're, they're tough to curb. So uh, uh, hopefully not the case. Hopefully they can get it worked out here and we can get – because uh, losing uh, – Losing Mather, Brock Mather, the leader of that defense, and the way he's playing tonight would be a big blow to our defense. You know, I have a friend that's a uh, a long distance runner, and uh, yeah, you know, again, you get a little older, these cramps start to sneak up on you for the stupidest reasons. I mean, you're just sitting down enjoying, you know, watching football on TV to say nothing for playing it, and you cramp up. You know, I got a friend, that's a long distance runner, that says the uh, the key to that is when it hits, you go to the refrigerator, you grab the jar of pickles, and you drink the pickle juice, and supposedly that is. The cure-all for the cramps. Oh, we need to get a jar of pickles. Yeah, some, somebody go go bust out the uh, the gherkins and, uh, and and get them to Brock Mather. But I, I, that's what he swears, absolutely swears by it. Pickle juice. Pickle juice. Second down. It's going to be Jordan to throw. He gets hammered at the end of it, throws it up for grabs. It is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. Late penalty marker comes flying down at the 10-yard line as that ball was intended for Damani Sanchez. Offensive, sorry, defensive pass interference has been indicated against... So it looks like that one's going to get... A renegade defender for pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number 33. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. That is Ashton Thomas guilty of the interference there. Although, good to call his name and see that he's back out on the field. He was one of those ones that was affected by the cramps earlier in the third quarter. So Thomas back out there, but they ring him up on the pass interference call. Big penalty takes the ball down inside the renegade 35 yard line. First and 10, El Camino as Jordan drops to throw. And this time they are going to wrap him up, yank his helmet off as they pull him to the ground. And that is Ramos. Once again, Armando Ramos. We've called his name all night tonight. Wrapped up. Makai Jordan and brought him to the ground finally. Yeah, we talked earlier about the Renegades being deep at the defensive line position and the defensive end. Um, and they've been rotating those players in uh, regularly throughout the night. And one thing that's been able to do is keep them fresh. And they've got a lot of guys there with fresh legs and, and continuing to be able to put pressure uh, on the quarterback. And Ramos, he's been fresh all night. Uh, he's a load, and he's uh, been doing a great job. There's Brandon Jordan with a carry. Left side into the wall of renegade defenders, led by Jalen Corpru there. And one of the things they're doing here is they're not over-pursuing. Um, that's the way they're defending against this uh, this uh, running attack is although they're beating their defense the the offensive linemen they're not over rushing and creating cutback lanes for the running back and they're swallowing them up great adjustment by the defensive coaching staff so third down and long now as they'll fake the flip go to the wide receiver screen on the left side taking the ball and running still on his feet down that left sideline is Dion Moore and he picked up the first down on that third and long yeah, good effort there by the by the receiver. Um, got quite a few yards there after the catch. A couple of renegades were head hunting and trying to lay the lick, and uh, didn't wrap up there. And they were able to get the first down. So ball spotted now at the renegade 21. First and 10 as the uh, timeout now is going to be called before the snap. And El Camino doesn't look happy about it. I think they had to burn their. Looked no. like a late substitution by Bakersfield College. Yeah, but I think we got another cramping situation back in the secondary. Looks like Jalen Lawson's uh, got the cramp monster again. Uh, yeah, so it might have been an official's timeout. The El Camino coaching staff and that offense seemed a little grumpy after that whistle was blown. They might have thought they had the right play dialed up there.
Well, if you thought you had it dialed up then, dial it up again. Right? Lightning can strike twice. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, keep him out of the keep him out of the end zone defense. Let's go. First and ten here. Mackay Jordan from the shotgun. It's going to be a give. That's Bradford. Nope, it's Jordan with a fake. He's got it again coming right side at the 20. This time, the Bakersfield College Renegades saw it coming, and they kept a man on him. That is Braden Gordon, the sophomore defensive back out of Independence High School here in Bakersfield that read that one well and made the tackle. Yeah, one of those freshman corners that uh, getting some playing time tonight and doing a good job out there. Brings up second and eight. Empty second backfield eight. means Jordan will throw. He's got a lot of time. Three-man rush. Bakersfield dropped everybody. He's going to heave it into the back corner of the end zone. Had a receiver there, and but overthrew it just a tad incomplete. incomplete. Out of the end zone. And Jordan knew it. Look at him uh, with his hands on his knees. He had that. That was a touchdown. He saw it in his mind and just overthrew the ball a bit. Yeah, I can see the philosophy <laughs> philosophy of uh, allowing a scrambling quarterback. Uh, you're giving him, it's spying on him and not, not letting him get outside the pocket. But we've got to put a little bit of pressure on him. And he actually, had way looks too like much time to complete the pass there. Jordan is holding his rib cage as he comes off the field. So maybe the Renegades did get a good clean lick on him as he let go of that. But he's off the field at this point, replaced by Dylan Guerra, who throws left side. It's tipped in and out of the hands of Dion Moore, incomplete. Dylan Guerra. So that could be an interesting uh, storyline for this last three minutes and one second of this ball game as well. If Makai Jordan, who's been very, very good scrambling with the football, if nothing else, is uh, off the field for very long with a, again, he came off holding his, uh, the, his left rib cage as he went to the sideline. So Dylan Guerra back in there at quarterback. We've seen him on and off throughout the night. They've got a fourth down situation here, so this this really could be the ball game here if they can't at least pick up a first down. Garrett's going to throw. He's got the out route. Has a receiver going to his knees and making a fine catch inside the 10-yard line, and that is Colenzo with his third catch and picking up the first down for El Camino. Yeah, two minutes and 50 seconds left in the ball game. A score here doesn't kill the Renegades' chances, but they sure would like to keep them out of the end zone. So Makai Jordan back in there at quarterback. He's going to keep it, dancing his way, spinning his way inside the five and down to about the two-yard line. So Jordan, if he's nursing a ribcage injury, it showed no ill effect there. He looked like the same slippery quarterback he'd been all night. Yeah, and every time, every play that they have to run to, to, to try to score takes that much more time off the clock. So we're down to two minutes and 15 seconds here. So the Renegades can keep him out of the end zone here. That'll... Cut up another chunk of clock. They'll get the playoff before the two-minute warning to give to Bradford, but flying, I mean flying across the line of scrimmage was Rashad Nelson, the freshman defensive lineman out of Ridgeview. Yeah, coaches were really excited about Rashad. Big kid, real strong athlete, uh, and uh, that kind of play will give him a little bit more confidence, but good job for the freshman out of Ridgeview. Clock ticking now inside, two minutes to go, 144 and counting. Renegades lead this one 24 13 with El Camino threatening. Yeah. Penalty marker down before the snap. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense. So a little early motion by that El Camino offensive line sets them back five yards and they'll try third down again. Yeah, center snapped the ball before everybody was set. And <clears throat> cost him another five yards. But they're going the wrong way, Brian. It's what you want to see That's if you're a right. Bakersfield College Renegade fan. Take him back, take him back, way back. Dylan Guerra from the pistol. He's going to take the snap off his shoe tops. He's going to have to tuck it. He's going to stay behind the line of scrimmage trying to throw it. Chucks it into the end zone blind and falls incomplete as he got hit by Cameron Williams. Yeah, he did a good job uh, <laughs> getting that ball away. The Renegades were pressuring hard, uh, made a couple of nice elusive moves. He had guys open in the, in the end zone. He just didn't, couldn't get enough on the football to get it to him. Great job by the defense. So the ball game is here. Fourth and goal, a minute 20 to go. Renegades lead by 11. If the 
Warriors have any chance of making this a ball game, they need to put it in the end zone right here. And they aren't even going to try. They're going to line up for the field goal. That's interesting. That doesn't help them at all. Well, they're going to need uh, they're going to need ten points to to, or to win the football game. If they can get three here, onside kick and a hail mary, it gets them there. I guess that's what they're thinking. And lined up for the. Yeah, I mean, they, the, the Renegade lead is 11 at this point. So that three gets it down to eight. They'd need a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to tie it. Like, it's an interesting uh, interesting call. I, I figured you'd at least take a shot at the end zone. There. Like I said, I leave the math up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points, eleven points. There's, I don't know. You, I, yeah, you do I know. It's, it, it's eleven <laughs> points. We took off our shoes and still didn't have enough. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. Either way, they got to have two scores. Uh, they've been down here before, and, and unfortunately, they think that, uh, or fortunately, whatever it may be, they think that their best shot at putting points on the board is a field goal. That's a tough angle angle for a kicker. Um, and the. <clears throat> The last time he had a short field goal, he knocked it off the upright. And the time before that, the Renegades blocked it and returned it down to the 20. So, um, yeah, you're right. An interesting call by the uh, El Camino coaching staff. But here we go. Ball so game's on the ball line. Ball on the left hash mark. Holder taking a knee at the 20. Makes this about a 30-yard field goal. It's up and off the left upright. The old boing. What are the odds of that? Two field goals in a row, the kicker hits the upright. Yeah, yeah. I guess if you're going to do it once, you might as well do it twice. So no good on the field goal attempt, and with a minute 16 to go. Meanwhile, and remember, El Camino out of timeout, so Renegades can come in here and just basically take a knee on this thing at this point. Yeah, clean snap from uh, uh, quarterback center exchange, uh, take a knee, victory formation. And uh, wrap this one up. Uh, get a nice win here uh, with your home crowd. Start off uh, 2-0 and uh, for the young season. So good job by the Renegade team tonight. And just like that, they will line it up in the famous victory formation. And just take a knee on these final... 75 seconds of this home opener here in 2021. And Chatty, uh, you got to figure if they, you're the Renegades, you had a little bit of a nail biter there for a bit, but they're going to walk off the field tonight. They got to be very happy overall with the performance. Now you've got a couple of injuries. You had a couple of situations if you're a BC fan to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. How badly is Hawkins hurt? What is the quarterback situation with uh, with uh, Castro starting the game, but then being pulled essentially in the second quarter. Is that an injury situation? Is that a coaching decision? You know, what's the story behind the Castro situation with Richard Lara replacing him? And then, you know, what happens uh, with the, some of those other injuries that you had? It didn't look like anything else very serious, but Hawkins and Castro, those are the question marks, I think, for the Renegades. And I think you're right, and uh, we'll find answers out to those here shortly, but um, um, take nothing away from... Uh, from anything that, that was a good performance by the Renegades tonight. They did what they needed to do. They came in against uh, in all in all aspects of the game an inferior uh, uh, El Camino football team, not one that we expected to have much trouble with. Coach but, Little John down there getting his very <laughs> first victory shower with the Gatorade as he finishes his first real victory. Got the forfeit victory last week, but earned this one tonight and got the Gatorade shower by his team down there. Yeah, that's final good, score. Good recognition. 24-13 in favor of the Bakersfield College Renegades. We'll step aside here, come back in a couple minutes and wrap this thing up from Memorial Stadium. 24-13 Renegades the score, and that is final. Doing the right thing isn't always the easy thing, like supporting our clients through one of the toughest times of their lives. Getting it right also means working harder and smarter, building a reputation for integrity as well as success, earning the respect of judges and jurors, and the appreciation of thousands of clients. None of that is easy, but anything less just wouldn't be right. Choose Jacoby and Myers. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. 
My training helps me in my classes when I must give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting nationalguard.com. I believe if you're an expert in any topic, you can make it easy for anyone to understand. Let it be a PPO, HMO, Medigap, or prescription drug plan. We won't steer you in any way. After meeting with us, I'm confident you'll walk away feeling comfortable about your choice. We are Roman Associates, Medicare Services. Give us a They're not sort of big. They're tort of big. They're not sort of tasty. They're tort of tasty. Introducing Del Taco's new epic tortas. Try chicken BLT, crispy chicken Caesar with guac, and carne asada with queso. Del Taco's epic tortas. They're totally awesome. Del yeah. During these trying times, look no further than Hometown Plumbing, Sewer, and Drain for the best in customer service and repairs. Family owned and operated, we remain open during this time and are dedicated to our customers' safety, taking extra safety precautions on the job site because we're your neighbors and we're in this together. You're watching Bakersfield College Renegade Football. Tonight's game is sponsored by Jim Burke Ford Lincoln. You'll want to say, I bought it at Burke. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium here on the grounds of Bakersfield College on 17th Taylor Shop. What a game our Todd Littlejohn with his first win as the Bakersfield Renegades head coach. You can see the team, they're taking a knee behind me. The celebration here at Memorial Stadium for our Todd Littlejohn. After two years of waiting, two years of fans not being able to be in the stands, we finally have a game here at Bakersfield College, and it was a great one. Special teams played a factor, and a, special, and a former special teams coordinator and Coach Little John prevailed. 24 to 13 was the final, and that's going to do it for us here at Memorial Stadium. 17 News is next.